Call the meeting to order it. <laughs> Call the meeting. Five fifty nine. Kate Lally is here to. I assume we have no changes of agenda. No, but I think we may have some public comments. Do we want to do Kate first? Do public comments? Yeah, yeah I just want to make sure she's all. Is this good enough for what you need? Uh, yeah, I think so. Would you want me to use the microphone for the? Uh... Ask. Uh, I don't know how how well is her voice. Um, uh, she probably does need to come up, right? Up on you. If you want to get closer, it should be heard more clearly, but you don't need to. Okay. Yeah, I'll, that's going to be a problem. Now we're going to skip back to the... Yeah, now, oh, now we'll skip back to, let's see, the only changes in the agenda is that Seth isn't here, but you'll give us a brief discussion on that. And any public comments? Is that me? Is that you? Well, this is public. If you have something you want to talk about, now, or you can wait till the end of the meeting, but if I were you, I wouldn't I wait would till the end. Wait. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think everybody knows me. I'm Deanna Judkins, and I'm submitting my resignation as Lister for the town of Hyde Park for many reasons. I've done it all enough. It's been since the 80s. Oh, wow. um, a few personal reasons I'm not going to go into. It's in my letter. Um, I'm just, just really disappointed in you guys as leaders. Um, it was two years or three years in a row, it's been very clear that the taxpayers wanted town meeting back at the elementary school. And I, I read the minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't fully agree with the minutes. And I feel you guys aren't listening to the taxpayers. But anyway. With that said, I I really hope Matt is coming on as a lister, which is great. We'll need another one, and that's why I'm coming now, so we can get in the town report, so you can get someone on a ballot. Um, and I'm just concerned with local politics being controlled by the state. There's basically no more local. And it's the same thing with the lister position. Yep. It's the same thing with the school boards, know. really. Right. right. And mm -hmm. I'm just tired of it. Yeah. Been doing it no, too no. long and I'm done. Yeah. Thank well, you. Well, for, thank you for doing it that long, Dan. Well, really. it used to be. Well, fun. and lots of other things. Yeah. It yeah. Used to I be think fun. And I, got, I wasn't going to do it the last term, but we had the reappraisal come around and I've done, this would have been my third reappraisal, and I just feel that with my knowledge helping it go forward is easier than with three new people so anyway here's my resignation okay. I'd, I'd like with you doing that and talking about moving the uh, <clears throat> um, moving the meeting back to the elementary school and um, I I agree with you completely and I think that's where it belongs and we had a proposal and worked it out but the Board of, Board of Civil Authority and something came up that night and I couldn't be there. Aunt Sue had to take care of a three-year-old and a five-year-old because mom was really sick, so there you go. Um, but Dave, you were there, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think maybe in, to explain why you all decided that it wasn't a good thing to move it. Well, I just don't agree. I don't have to agree, but it's okay. Well, and I don't know if it was in reading the... Well, it, it, was, it was a bunch of reasons. One was the... Uh, uh, they can remember back in the previous years. When it was a real town meeting. When it was a real town meeting, yes. Uh, the meeting was going up front, and there was a more of a meeting going up out back with the business, and nobody could hear. Um, Kim had a problem with it because of so much extra work because the Lemoyle sets everything up for her, other than just the, the table when you come in and over to the LCA. Uh, well, that's what volunteers are for. Yeah, well, these volunteers are... I don't agree with are, him. Sorry, I don't agree with him. Getting apartment and, and, you know, you got the right to... Yeah. And as far as uh, what you said about your resignation letter, you let me know because we can have a retirement party the same day. I'm not having a trick. Well, you, well, you, you and I can. How's that? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to invite anybody else, right? 
but I mean that that was the consensus of that board of, of different reasons. Now uh, there were some people on that board that had very good reasons why he should have been over there, but there were just more people there that night that didn't want it there. But I do think uh, it may be. Uh, I well, don't think the issue is done. That we're going to talk about it at town meeting. That's right. 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 That's With right. all the goods and the bags. Because right. we never we never brought it up at town meeting to brought it there. To vote on having it there. Because if we did, we wouldn't have no choice because the voters said to have it there. Well, I think you talked about it two years in a row at. Yeah, people, people asked at the end of the meeting right. and people but said we should take it back. On. But no, I, that's I right. Think no, what we're going right. to have to do is bring but it to a vote. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. We'll do it town meeting. That's right. <laughs> and thank you for all that service. And you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyone else with public comment? Nope? Okay. Kate? Here uh, as a background, uh, multiple, <laughs> here. Yeah, multiple summers we've had issues with uh, town crew taking out the lease <laughs> on the north side of West Main Street. At, for whatever reason, we just couldn't get it right until this past year. But anyway, the outfall of that was the highway department asking, and we figured out how to do it, uh, for the relocation of the lilies, which are right on the road shoulder. So the relocation of the lilies, <laughs> Paul Trudell enjoys, and the community has benefited from them as well, would be moved away from the road shoulder and away from the ditch. There is going to be a brand new ditch on the, that side of the road under the sinkhole project, if we can get that out for summer or fall this year. So we asked Kate to come in and kind of look at a more comprehensive improvement for this intersection of the rail trail. You'll see the rail trail going left to right and then West Main coming down uh, from Main. So Kate's here to just walk this through. She did a site visit and talked to the neighbors, but turn it over to her to give you a little bit more of what this kind of plan does for the community. Uh, yes, um, it, it's just a conceptual plan for uh, how that intersection might be uh, kind of redesigned a little bit to um, meet more, more of the community's needs, specifically to um, supplement the existing wayfinding sign there, which is, you know, I think doing a pretty good job of uh, getting folks to, encouraging folks to come up and explore the main street. Um, but uh, just to, to um, kind of leverage that as an opportunity to, to create more of a sense of place. And I, I, it's my understanding that this area was also identified when you all did the uh, kind of visioning with that, the public for project spaces, uh, which I think happened, you know, what, within the last 10 years, right? Um, yes. Yeah. So this, this area was sort of identified as a, as a great spot for a kind of trailhead park, which would then kind of draw visitors up to um, Main Street. So that was really, you know, the, the, the other um, driver of this project besides this opportunity to fix some drainage issues and uh, which would involve uh, picking up the lilies and then replanting them. So, um, so that's, that's what Ron um, asked me to, to, to provide a kind of an idea of. So this is, this is just a, a, what I've done and um, so the idea is over where the sign is right now, the wayfinding sign, it's, it's a, a very small area. So we thought just something, maybe just like a little bench and a pullover spot um, was about all that that area could really accommodate. Um, and then, you know, and I've, I've put in, in there this, uh, an idea of a bike repair station. Um, and there's an image of that and, and uh, like two pages down, which we can look at in a minute, just what that is. Um, it's the kind of thing they have um, that they have down in, in Jeffersonville um, at their little sort of trailhead that is apparently very, very popular. So um, there are sort of four uh, parts to this. Um, and so there's the um, um, Paul Trudeau's uh, property on the north side. Um, the interventions uh, for the ditching are going to result in, in a sort of shelf being created that could be used to for for plantings, um, 
and some of that is going to be in the town right of way and then there the, a, a little bit up the hill it, it might be just over the onto Paul's property so um, the, the, is somewhere in there if you can imagine that um, and so that could be treated in a number of ways you could the, I've shown uh, the cleared area as planted with some trees and some understory uh, shrubs and then some the daylilies um, could be there it could also just be simply just something much much simpler and maybe just daylilies because it's already a forested area um, so um, I think that the, the, the larger impression would be made by planting uh, plantings in a town right of way on the south side of the street. Um, so if you can imagine in your minds where we are, if you're standing down on the trail, the, the rail just trail. Just turn around and look at everybody. Does everybody know where this is? Yeah. yeah? Okay. okay. So if you can, <laughs> if you don't know where it is, it'd be hard to imagine anything. <laughs> so okay, granted. Um, so if 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 uh, if everybody's clear on where this is, and and you're you're standing there in the in the rail trail, and you're looking up West Main Street, um, on the left hand side, the the um, Trudell property side, there's a hill, a forested hillside, and then then the then there's the road, and then it's sort of. Uh, uh, drops a bit and on the other side is is a property with a lawn and it uh, just kind of an expanse of lawn um, and so that is uh, that for a variety of reasons the human eye just tends to be tends to be drawn uh, to more open spaces and the right hand side of things and lower places it's we tend to notice horizontal lines more than we notice vertical lines um, and so I think that, that it would make a stronger impression to, there's limited amount of funding for these kinds of projects typically, to concentrate on the southern side of, of the street. And so I am suggesting um, a row of some really nice street trees that could, in the town right of way, that could go up. I'm thinking four of them, and that could be just like some a nice sugar maple or you know whatever you guys would like basically an oak something like that just um, putting a couple of them going up and then um, Ron if you can if you can um, show the oh sorry <laughs> there you go so there would be like maybe one two three four or something there and then down on the rail park there would be another one so you see it would sort of relate those two areas to, uh, uh, actually, over closer to the um, West Main, you see where Mess West Main empties out. You see the row of trees. That is, there you go. Yeah. Four. Yes. <laughs> Three and one. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> um, so I think that would sort of help kind of relate the two spaces together and draw your eye up the hill. And then I'm proposing just because it's it's you know it's a there's a lot going on there. You've got the LVRT. You have West Main Street. You have somebody's personal property, private property. I think some kind of a, um, a a little bit of fencing would be really nice too to sort of set that area off and define um, wh what you know that that this is somebody's personal property and then here is the street and that I'm showing it just as a, l a couple of a little bit of fencing that would be in that corner there the fencing could emerge in a number of ways perhaps instead an alternative would be it marches up. Um, West Main sort of following where those trees are um, but just a very simple very appropriate for the rural condition that that this is and um, I'm thinking something you know unpainted you know just a, a, a simple um, rustic looking fence um, like you see all over Vermont um, so um, so that that's the 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 part on about Main Street and helping people, encouraging them to come on up and spend their money in the village, which is the ultimate goal, I think. Um, and then the little trails, the little uh, parks themselves. So I had mentioned that right by the sign there would be just a small little, just a quick stop stopping point. Somebody could maybe get off their bike, you know, sit for a minute, have a drink of water, fill their tires up get oriented with the wayfinding sign and then across the way would be a little bit of a larger area where there is the space for it 
And that could be something that is just a, just a simple graveled area. Um, and, and then maybe there could just be some, um, some benches in there. And I was thinking of uh, stone benches, perhaps in, you know, in, in granite or um, you know, marble or whatever, um, that would just be uh, benches that you could imagine somebody sitting on. And they would be cut stone. I, I thought this being Hyde Park in the Shire town, it would be very nice to have something that's cut stone. I have some images in the following slides that show what this might look like. And these might be even engraved um, with something to do with uh, um, words that might be important to the community or sayings or something like that. Um, so that's really kind of it. And it just, you know, it would require, uh, and there'd be some plantings around both of those. Very modest, very simple, low maintenance, you know, can be installed and maintained by volunteers and, you know, just some weed whacking by the, um, the town road crew a couple times a summer would sort of take care of it. Um, so nothing fancy, but durable materials that would make an impression, that would be lasting, and I, I hope um, that would be representative of this community. So there's, there's the, an idea of the fence. You can sort of see that <coughs> one that is um, with the trees. I think something like that is what I was imagining for right there. I think that would be just simply beautiful in, in um, this setting. And then just, um, Ron, if you can kind of uh, um, the yes, thanks. <laughs> yeah, and then down just a little bit. Um, sorry, uh, uh, the up uh, there. Oops, yeah. there you go. That's okay. Right top, right so, <laughs> so these are just. This is obviously images from someplace else, but it just shows you um, what you know. What a nice impression that makes if you have a little kind of pulled off area um, uh, along a rail trail. It really, it. It's really a nice welcome center, and you can provide any information that you want. You can, those can manifest any way you want. And then um, I think that would be really good at that nexus where it's, it, you get people to come up to Main Street. And then it sounds like, um, I haven't been here in a couple of summers, but it sounds like you guys have been very busy with um, the history tour and, and the, um, all sorts of, I mean, there's, there's stuff for people to do. There's the fork and gavel. There's now a public um, drinking fountain. There's, there's all sorts of, um, uh, you know, there's, there's some, some things that would draw people up here. The portable drinking fountain is dry. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, now I imagine it would be. <laughs> it is in the summer. It is in the summer. Okay. Well, there's the potential for it to be turned on, I suppose. Um, Let's see, and then, so this is just, again, ideas from other places um, of, of how you can, these things can manifest. So you can see it can be done super fancy or very, um, like on a budget, and it can also, this can change over time. So here's a community with the little signs that said it's a five minute walk to borrow a book, it's a five minute walk to a swimming hole. But those are just laminated little signs that they put up, and they had, you know, they probably got some high school kid to design an app that, you know, somebody could download onto their phone and it would show where all these places were. Um, and so, you know, <coughs> depending on how effective the community thinks that approach is, that could turn into more permanent, nicer signs that, you know, would, would be a, a, an investment. But this is, you know, that's like 50 bucks to get that up and running. Um, and then, you know, then there's this other community that obviously has some kind of, um, you know, public art thing going with the, Ron, if you mind, mind scooting back up, with the, the horse there, and then, and then I love that one, that's from Rhode Island where they have the fork in the road and there's actually a fork, I thought that was very funny. Um, and then of course the little lending libraries, I mean you guys have a very wonderful library that's a big part of your community. So We have a lending library already. Oh you do at already? At the other one, yeah. Oh okay. At the other end of oh, the, the other, other side, yeah. Yeah, okay, well maybe, yeah. a, maybe a, a second one, I don't know. Um, so uh, anyway, there's some, you can have a lot of fun with this. So, um, and, and it's just a way to express your community identity um, to passersby who have wallets and are hungry and thirsty and other things. So if you can scoot down to the next sign, there you go. So this is just what I was thinking about um, the, the idea of the 
the seat benches that could be made of um, stone. Um, and so, you know, the one that says responsibility, you'll, many of you will probably recognize that's from the University of Vermont. Um, you know, that would be, you know, the, the kind of gold, the gold standard, super fancy, expensive way to go. But as you can see from other places, there's some more um, attractive, um, more rustic um, approaches. The Cape Cod um, example, and um, you know, or even just just um, y you know, you don't have anything on there. You just have a, a a bench that's maybe not a solid piece of rock, but something that people have has yeah. been built. I'm gonna ask Roger something. You you could play storm. What's that? You could play store the benches. No, not at all. <laughs> oh, you could get the other. <laughs> we, we just put benches in Hyde Park at, at the park with, right. with, with the dry hydrant there for the family. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And it only took us eight years to get them from North Hyde Park to Hyde Park. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> um, and then the, just that. Slow but steady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there's room with all three came out. Yeah. So that, that funny looking red thing on the, on the left, that is a bike repair center, uh, center. So you can see it's a permanent thing that you install, um, you know, probably in a concrete block or something. So it, it stays in permanent, and then it has the tools kind of hang out of it that you need, just essential tools. And usually there's like some air or something there too. It, you can be whatever you want or um, decide to have. But they have one down in Jeffersonville, and I'm told it's, it's very popular. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be a really wonderful thing for you all to have. Um, if you wanted to, you know, just make that kind of an impression. So those are just some ideas um, for, I think it's a really interesting site and there's some very interesting opportunities there and, um, and oh, and those, those, all those stones that say Mary, sing, bed, etc. cetera, um, that is, is uh, done by a guy called Chris Cleary, who's part of the Cleary family who have uh, the Cleary stone down in, in Richmond off of Governor Peck Road and um, and so Chris is is uh, does all that engraving and he's I've worked with him on another project where um, it was a memorial stone that was placed at a, a trailhead park in the village of Shelburne where I live and um, and he did the engraving for it um, and and he's great to work with and he's as you can tell he's he's super talented and um, anyway that's. Uh, that's just some ideas for you guys to think about. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. So as far as next steps go, there will be, if everything works all right, with the sinkhole project, lots of construction right. at West Main Street, and some of those, think of the four projects at the four corners there, one may get picked off. Maybe in a couple of years we'll find money for another healthy living community grant right. or something like that. Well, there's no rush on this, it's just to have some plan because typically what happens is we try to take opportunities that come up. We don't, but we have some idea what the community wants to do. So we don't have a time frame on all the four quadrants there, but if everybody wants to sit and think about it or come up with other suggestions, then we can take those and modify the plan. Uh, hopefully construction no, did yeah, at least we get the lilies moved up this summer or fall. That John didn't appear that we took into uh, thinking about how they're going to change that intersection. This is down at the bottom of the hill. What's the name? In the bottom of the hill. By, by Black Farm Road? Yeah. yeah. This is down at the rail trail. Yeah, Not at so the top of the hill. Yeah, we'll have two. We'll have one that's more like a parking lot and a um, ent closest entrance to the village, which is the Depot yeah, Street okay. one. And then we have okay. this one, which is only yeah, bikes. Yeah, you were at the top of the hill. See, you didn't know where we were. Yeah, this is only bikes here. This is not <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, that's why the bench thing didn't make any sense to you. Yeah, that's like we're going right across the road. Okay, yeah. well, now that makes, okay, I get it, yeah. Oh, still on the water. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. No, we're at the bottom of the hill. I think I should raise my hand. Lilies. Yeah, the lilies. That should have told you right there where we were. <laughs> that's, that's actually that's great. That gives us a lot of good. Well, then we got some some thoughts moving forward, and 
And you're right. Once we have some ideas, then we can keep our eyes open for grants that come through and say, right. okay, and you got it. You got an little, idea. Little, little at a time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Super. Thank you. You're welcome. Dan, I want to back up one. Wouldn't it be a good idea to warn that at town meeting to have people vote on it as to where we should have it, where we should locate town meeting? Yeah. Then people will know ahead of time. Yeah. Okay. Ron, there's an addition for the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the board hasn't been printed yet, right? Correct. No, that's that's correct. That's what we're right. just thinking about it. You're right. That's the way to do it. And then if folks know they come, yeah, you know, then even you know, because sometimes people are there, and, and it is. It's so different not having the school meeting, you know, at the same time. Are you are you saying there was a split vote on the BCA? Is that what happened? Like it was a split no. vote? No, 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 no. no. There was only I think two people that said there are two people that was. Two, uh, pardon four. me. That was four. I wasn't there. Two people that was for it. And I don't know that for sure, but the, the majority was in yeah. favor of having it well, back. Because of the information they were given. Is yeah. I think they were not given. Well, we weren't given much information. information. We weren't given much information. That's the number one thing, the school weren't going to have nothing to do with it. Well, the school didn't make that decision. Well, I understand that, but I remember Mr. Boyle used to always set that up for us. That's right. Well, those janitors weren't going to do that for us the way well, it was brought what, to that's us. That's what volunteers are for. And then there was a problem of more than being one to have to cover two entrants. Yeah, that was a big thing. That, that was the big thing because right. if some come in by the gym, right. you're going to have two people there checking in. Uh, and then if you came in for the other way, you were going to have to have some more people checking people in to make sure that they were checked in to vote. Well, and, that would be easy to solve with just a sign. And then so I don't no know. They weren't like quite sure where they were. No, they weren't quite sure where they were going to set up the, the, the voting they, booth because you couldn't have them in the gym. I see that. They, I they, to the they took. To see okay, well, I'm not no, that no, information. We, right. we didn't have no, no information that's right. on it. That's, that's right. They just. they. They didn't, and yeah. you know, again, so, I had a family I mean, thing come up, and I think it's a good yeah, idea to let people vote. I think it's a great idea to let people vote. So Thank we you were going to explain suggestion. the whole thing. That yeah. yeah, it was yeah. going to be explained at the town meeting, but okay. and see what people wanted to do. But right. that was, you know, like I said, we only had very little information. Yeah, I see that from the minutes. Super. Okay. Ah. Uh, it's amazing how people can make you vote for something by not giving you enough information. I, I, well, could, I can make a comment to that, but we get into politics. So. <laughs> well, I, I just, and, and again, a good friend says, no matter how thin the pancakes, there's always two sides. And that's, you know, and I find that's a very good rule of thumb. <laughs> that's right. There's always two sides. Sometimes you can stand it right on its edge, too, yeah, and end up with more. I don't know if there's going to be enough parking there or not. I don't think you have to worry about it. If, if everybody, if they, if they, if they they don't show up anymore they do now there right. probably wouldn't be any problem exactly. well we'll 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 vote on it at town meeting and that'll be a Try it for resolution and if there's not enough parking if there's if it's not setting up correctly if there it's not working then you're going to know that it didn't work it worked it worked before well, it worked it for years when the when the when the school meeting was there and that was well it, that's that was quite about different years before because you had a room you had a classroom you could use to do the voting in yeah apparently that not available or something anyway okay um, before we get into into the budget discussion how about the other thing so that people are then welcome to stay if they want to <laughs> but they but they don't have to like the Sterling View Road I'm just looking yeah. if we can pick off a couple of the yeah, the easier things before well, we get into I, the budget I'll, I'll, I'll Okay, so what? Take so two seconds. It'll take two seconds. Yeah, okay, let's take two seconds. We can do the revolving loan fund quick as well. Yeah. And then the uh, sterling view, and then we can do Okay, revolving loan fund, just quick update. Yeah, probably. so Seth Jensen, who's regional planner, and I have been going, trying to collect information on what they call local uh, uh, revolving loan funds, which are different than federal state revolving loan funds, which typically are tied to grants or 
federal rules and all this other stuff. So basically the biggest difference is that if the select board uses local resources, property taxes, or loan repayment from the Sterling View Mobile Home Park, for example, to establish a revolving loan fund, it comes with very little strings attached, which sort of makes it more work, too, because generally you're going to want to have some system for a revolving loan fund than what it's used for. And so the concept is that the money would come in, the select board would set up an application process on community priorities, and then loans or grants could be given from that money. So loans repaid, stay with that fund, and get reloaned. Uh, typically, it's for capital items. Say somebody was a uh, new business that needed a, a second stove to double production in a bakery or something, but they didn't have capital and couldn't get access to capital to buy it. The town could do a revolving loan fund, and then the money would eventually come back for reuse. Um, if there was a small project where somebody was having a grand opening and they wanted to do something different that's going to cost $200, but they wanted the town to support them, then maybe the $200 would be a grant without being repaid. But all that stuff has to be written down and thought about. So basically all we have right now is templates and examples from other places. We probably would want to mirror uh, federal or state rules a little bit because they're pretty well thought out so that we're not uh, you know, starting from scratch there. But there's also uh, potential for a committee of sorts, three or four, maybe five people that would actually be managing the revolving loan fund if there was activity. Probably not a lot of activity. We had one request up in North Hyde Park where somebody wanted a uh, town support for a second kiln to dry wood. And they didn't have all of, they had some of the capital funds to buy it, but they didn't have all of the capital funds. So they would basically expand their business, but they're stuck uh, on, a, on a cash basis. So. We can't respond to that now, but if we had a revolving loan fund, we, we could, which doesn't, you know, it's between us and them kind of thing, so I don't even know if that would, I guess they would disclose it in other banking activity, but we wouldn't have the same strings that a bank would potentially have. It would be more of a, a lot of good faith uh, loan practices. I, I don't know where to go from there. We have a lot of information that the board wants to proceed on this. Part of the energy is coming with the potential transfer of the uh, Ken Harvey's mobile home park to the co-op, and Ken has a loan that's owed to the town of 80000 plus or minus, and that money would come back unrestricted to the select board. What do you do with 80000 It's one of the reasons why the revolving loan fund potentially came up, someplace to accept the money and keep it uh, in keep use. Keep it local, time. right, right. Yeah. And the, that sort of the original money that went to Ken to do that project, that was the intent of that, that the money as it was paid back was paid back locally and gave local communities the ability to do these kinds of loan funds. And a lot of times what what local revolving loan funds do is they can they can fill a gap for and, and it's usually it's usually it's almost always, you know, small businesses where they've got their financing and the bank has got this financing and they got this financing and they may be, you know, they may be five hundred dollars, they may be three thousand dollars and there's that just impossible gap for them. And that's a lot of times where your local revolving loan fund can, you know, can really help a business. And it's also once once you establish one um, it's a it's an attractive marketing thing to get people to do businesses in your community, you know, because it's a very pragmatic way that you can you can help businesses. We were talking with the Fork and Gavel about some of the things they're doing over there and expansions they're you know they're looking at and and again for a lot of small businesses it's not you know we're not talking fifty thousand dollar loans you're talking a few thousand dollars makes a big difference for somebody getting going in something so. So just getting, I, I, I think it's just right now, you know, it's sort of having the homework. We have, we have, our, we have our, our committee that deals with doing the, yeah, the joint economic. Right, you know, so we sort of got a foundation there. Yeah. And I was actually looking for more information, came from meeting with them that Fork and Gavel wanted to meet with them and a couple of other businesses yeah. in town. And, we, and uh, Roger and I were there and they talked about it. So I said, well, let's, Let's just start to get some more information and get ourselves in a spot where the, the transition at Sterling continues to move forward when, we're, yeah. Yeah. when we are in receipt of some money. We've got a, 
we've got a sane place to put it and some ways to think about how to help reinvesting that in the community. Okay. That's it. Okay. How about let's let's skip four. Let's, let's do the quickies. The Sterling View Road. Review the draft survey for recording. <laughs> for the board, I'm Matt Reed. I represent uh, Ron Stanclit from this. There's actually two sheets there that uh, show the road. Um, the original survey of the road, I resurveyed it, added it to that, and then I added the end loop to it. I've also added the state plane coordinates, which is different than original surveys, so we could actually reestablish the the road quickly if somebody goes up there. It's not going to wash out, but if it did, we wouldn't have to start from scratch. We're using the, the baseline for the state to launch. The big issue that I did have is when I laid out, when I surveyed the road, and then we laid out the original right of way that was dedicated to the town, they don't quite line up in a few spots, and you'll see it's on. So it's a lot of lines on there, but you'll see there's a few places where the, the road is actually next to the boundary line and over on that one, as you come up the hill, the road is not in the center of its right of way. I'm going back, once I discovered that, now I'm going back tomorrow morning, and I think there's a few garages and porches that may be on the very edge of that, and I want to note those on the survey. Okay. Because I took account of everything that was within 25 feet of the center line as the road's laid out, not 25 feet of where it should have been. It's not bad. I think there's maybe a quarter of a garage that's close. But the other concern is, of course, all the light posts and the sewer manholes. What I, I surveyed what I saw when I went by. I don't have the engineering plans to tell you what's underground right now. But I went at least found everything that is within that 50 foot right of way so it can be identified. And uh, if it needs to be moved or somebody wants to adjust it, it needs to be adjusted. Also, I put the grades down there because there was one section that's kind of steep when you go up and it's still under the 8% grade, so it's reasonable and all the quarters uh, meet the minimum criteria. But all practical purposes, you only leave the road as is. I wouldn't change it. Yeah. I would just note where yeah. there might be potential issues and then now that once this gets recorded, then that would stop if somebody wants to put another garage or another building, yeah. Yeah, putting, putting it in, in there, the right, right way, thinking that it's actually just 25 feet from the center line compared to where it really is. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I wouldn't move the road. The, the cost, the expense, and, and everything else would not yeah. be worth it because all the power poles and the manholes and the drainage would be where the real cost would right. be. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. You see the building? Yeah. Uh, oh, I got we got we got we got the we got the little right here. That's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Noting the age of the select board. Right? <laughs> yeah, seven percent. Okay. Any any questions? Nope. Okay. Sounds sounds easy. Too easy. <laughs> there must be something wrong, right? Mm -hmm. This was easy. Okay. Okay. How about we ready for the budget? Great. I've got a few copies of paper if any. There's five of them here. If somebody wants to take those. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I've never been on oh, before, yeah. and I'm supposed to speak on behalf of the Mount Hope today about requesting money for the appropriation. Okay. I just didn't know when. Yep. That was. <laughs> how about? How about if we jump and do that instead of going? No, 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 no. That, that's. <laughs> Believe me, ask. Um, 
the outside agency requests and which is six and we have I don't have a bunch of that chart that Kim put together. Oh, there you go. And the Loyal County Mental Health Services at the bottom. Gotcha. Here we go. Kim did this one. Okay. And again. The yellow line helps find there it. There we go. Yeah, right there. <clears throat> there it is. Okay. So what, ha what happens is Lamoille County Mental Health has not been on the ballot before, correct? Correct. Correct. And um, so you all, they, uh, they wanted to, um, they wanted to be added this year and they did not get in the required number of signatures in time. And, <clears throat> and actually, I know the while the family center has been in, they wanted a significant increase, so they got went and got the signatures, even though they're already on it, to ask for the increase. Um, mental health, and it could then anyway. They didn't they didn't get the signatures, so the process. Um, now am I right, Ron? The process for somebody to come on now that hasn't gotten the signatures and we're past the deadline for getting the signatures is it needs unanimous support of the select of the to select the board article. to add the article. Okay, so you just got the there's the table now. <laughs> Please introduce yourself. And so I'm Sherry Marcelino. Um, I work for the Wild County Mental Health and I've worked there for 15 years now. Um, our CEO, Michael Hartman, asked me to come and speak to you all, um, I believe, because he knows I do a lot of public speaking on behalf of the agency. And I also lived in Hyde Park for the last seven years. Uh, my children go to school here. Um, and I guess the question is why would we be considered? Um, we're a designated agency, which means we serve everyone in our community that meets criteria for our programs. We serve people with severe and persistent mental illness. We ser uh, serve children with mental illness, um, behavioral issues, and developmental disabilities. We serve adults with developmental disabilities. And in some cases, people that fall under those categories, um, we're the only place that they can go to receive services. Um, all of our uh, funding comes through Medicaid dollars, all of our billing comes through Medicaid dollars. Um, and we, we don't have the right to say no to anyone if they meet our criteria. Um, what does that mean? It means that we um, end up serving a lot of people um, in very roundabout ways because we don't always have um, the funding category to meet everyone or perhaps um, we have to expand our services in order to fit people's unique needs. Um, here in Hyde Park, um, for our children's services, we have the children's mental health services, which would include therapies and case management and things like that. But we also have school-based services called our regular program. Um, and we do serve children in both Hyde Park Elementary and um, in Union and Long Middle School through that program. Um, that would include one-on-one -on -one supports for kids that um, perhaps have severe developmental um, disabilities or severe uh, mental illness um, and need the support required to be able to graduate and receive an education. Um, we also have the Oasis House, which is here in Hyde Park. It's over here on Christie Lane. Um, we're about to employ um, five more people um, in that facility because we're gonna open one more bed. Um, it's a step down facility um, from hospitalization. So adults with um, severe and persistent mental illness that met the criteria to be psychiatrically hospitalized can go to Oasis um, in order to acclimate back into the community and uh, receive the support that they need so they don't end up going back into the hospital, which is um, quite an expense to the state um, as a whole, as well as a place where they could go to avoid going to the hospital. Um, right now, um, our beds are full. I 
would say 90% of the time, if not more. Um, and the state um, is working with us to actually expand our services now. Um, we also work with local law enforcement. We have the um, emergency services department um, through Memorial County, um, which basically serves um, anyone in the agency, whether you're receiving services or not. If you're in mental health crisis, um, you'd be calling our agency to receive the supports needed and hopefully get the connections that you need to receive support after the back and get through that crisis. Um, right now, we, I mean, since I've started working at Memorial County Mental Health, we've expanded tremendously. Just our Redwood program alone has gone from, I would say, 20 students um, to well over 70 um, just in the last, um, I would say, five to six years. Um, not only that, but Oasis House didn't even exist, um, you know, 10 years ago. Um, that's a brand new program. Um, we also have two residential homes for our um, adult population. That's located in Morso and Johnson. Um, but really, Memorial County Mental Health is here to serve the entire community, Hyde Park, Morrisville still, it, it doesn't matter, and um, our doors are always open to everyone. Um, there's a lot of benefits of being a small agency in a small community, and a lot of hardships as well, because we're expected to keep up with the requirements around electronic medical record, um, and um, new uh, tech so uh, software that other agencies have the luxury of being able to cover that overhead and that cost because they're serving triple, quadruple the amount of people that we are, creating much more revenue. Um, we don't have that. We're serving a smaller population and still needing to buy that new tech and that new software, um, which has proven to be um, a hardship for our agency in the last few years. Um, regardless, though, um, I think I can easily say that we don't go without and our community. Have you, particularly since you've been there for a while, mm -hmm. have you seen a, I don't want to say, a, a difference in the clients or different demands centered around substance use orders? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, we are experiencing an opiate epidemic, as most people know. Um, I would say anywhere from 70 to 85% of people with um, severe and persistent mental illness also experience co-occurring substance use disorders. Um, we're becoming far more educated on that as um, a VA um, as a whole. Uh, but it's sort of what came first, the chicken or the egg sometimes when you're meeting someone, and really the answer is it doesn't matter. Um, we're gonna teach, the, uh, help the person as a whole person and figure out what techniques work for them. Um, but yes, we have definitely experienced an influx of folks experiencing substance dependence. I got a question, or two. Of course. Being the Moyle County Mental Health, have you gone to the other seven towns in the county and asked them for donations also? I personally have not, but I know my co-workers have. Um, we've gone to Stowe, we've gone to Cambridge. I believe we're going to Morrisville. I'm not sure about Johnson. Well, um, it should be all, all the towns, I would think, if you're not going to refuse anybody. And my second part of the question, where did you get the $5,000 from? Was it population or it's just a, every town giving 5000 whether it's more Hyde Park or Stowe or? Stowe, um, they donated last year to us, and um, I'm sorry, I can't speak to the amount that they, they gave us. Could, could, could you check it out and get back to Ron to uh, let yeah, us know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'm more curious to see what towns in the, in the county. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and well, and if they've given before, like, right. again, I don't, yeah. I don't know if we've just been an anomaly and not been asked, or is this something new that you're asking communities to give? This is something new, I believe, okay. that we're asking. Um, okay. Because um, this is the first time I've ever been asked. Okay. Uh, what's your goal 
to uh, achieve as far as revenue uh, throughout the, the towns. I think our goal is to be able to support an adequate staff so that we don't have wait lists and don't have people that are going without appropriate services because we simply don't have the manpower to offer that. Um, like I said, we are mandated to serve and we should be we should be the Cadillac of services if that's the case. Mm -hmm. If the one kind of mental health is the only place I can go to, oh, I mean, I have a son with autism and he receives services from the one kind of mental health because that's a designated agency and where we were told to go. And if that's the case, then that should be the best place for him. So what's the monetary amount that would meet that goal? Um, if, as it for the agency as a whole, yeah. well, right now we're submitting a budget that's pretty, that's almost in the negative. Um, so I, I, I couldn't give you a, a figure for that. I apologize, I can get one for you. Um, but like I said, given the additional need um, for overhead costs regarding the new tech, new software, new EMR, medical record, all of those things with the requirements from the state, we're not given additional funding for those requirements. Um, and um, it's you know, affecting our bottom line. So I didn't know if you had a a goal you're trying to achieve uh, as far as monetary amount and uh, how that was going to be split up maybe throughout the town of the one you're worried. Right. You're talking yeah. about the money just the, from the towns, right? Yes. As yes. opposed to, yeah. right, right. Which is hoping to raise by, right. by this approach. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times what these organizations, um, you're, real, the, you're real small organizations, it's different, but the, but a lot of these are pretty decent sized you know, organizations and what the dollars from the town as much show when they're A, dealing with the state or dealing with foundations and writing grants, <coughs> they can say we receive community support, which is because most grants and foundations want to know if, you're, if your communities directly support you other than the state. And I think a lot of times that's, that's almost as important as the amount of money I mean, if if you know if they raise if somebody raises ten thousand dollars out of the county in their budget for most of these organizations, that isn't a lot of money, um, but it's the uh, if you will, it's the buy-in from the communities to show that it's there. Okay, what would we like to do? Wait until we if we uh, this is what. We can't wait till next meeting and, and still, no, and no, still no, make it. Make no, no, no. Uh, I d I she, she would prefer to know. Well, th that's right. The need to know. Technically, we'd have the warning on the 29th. Yeah, we got so the 29th. We, sign we it can do it right. We've, we've got to sign it. I, I don't, personally, I don't have any trouble putting things like this on the warning because I, I think it's uh, almost goes back to Deanna. It's town meeting and there it is. It's a list of organizations. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times they all go through, but sometimes people have some questions and sometimes people want to put some more money into yeah. something. You right. know, so I don't, I But this is the article. Personally. This, right. The policy would have an article called out for Lomano County Mental Health. Right. For $5,000 or whatever number right. you decide to put in. You're not bound to do it because the petition didn't find you. Right. But if you agree by unanimous consent that you put something exactly. in or 5,000 right. in, you, you have a lot of flexibility until next Wednesday. Yeah, yes, right. We have, right. We have flexibility until next Wednesday. Right. I have no problem with that. It's a, no. it's, it's a great organization, and uh, uh, you guys should be applauded for, for doing what you do. But I think everybody in the county, if Hyde Park does it, everybody in the county ought to do it. You know, because it is a county organization it's not a Hyde Park or Marshall stall organization so that's my only drawback on that but to vote well, on it I would vote on it yeah quite and we could we could we could do it um, as pending. they've asked it the 5,000 pending that we know that the other communities have supported it sort of thing which I'm yeah I think if you want to give her some inclination that yes from Hyde Park but we also are going to hold a signing on the 29th. And before right, then, right, just right. We before just then, that. bring your information from the other people that have been driving, you know, mm -hmm. going around just so we can get that to them on the, the 29th. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like we've actually got the same thing with the family yeah. center. 
huh? Yes. Because they actually actually didn't get in quite enough signatures. Yeah, just. Uh, yeah, that was a little light. They had a um, petition, just short. Nothing. And they already have fifteen hundred. Right. The petition was going to ask for three thousand. I don't think they're asking for forty-five. It's not clear, but I don't think they're. Asking. No, they're asking for three. They're asking for three, yeah. so, but I also don't think they're going to really. Be, they know their fifteen hundred is in the budget, so right. Their, their article should have been more of an additional fifteen hundred on top of <coughs> existing appropriation to gotcha. total three thousand. But they didn't word it that way. Anyway, it's not a valid. So you have options again. You can ask the voters because this, this is the undefined problem of the policy. It says. Uh, non-minor needs to be an article. So non-minor request for an increase to an existing agency needs to go to the voters as an article. But non-minor is not defined. Oh, if it was minor, you would do what you're doing to uh, Lamoille Lamoille neighbors. neighbors right. That's a minor okay, $200. Right. 1500 is it 2000 Is that minor or is that, we yeah, right, what's minor? Okay. So you can, right. you can set that tonight or just I you gotcha. know, some understanding that under a thousand is minor, over a thousand they go for an article or something you know, it, it yeah, of an increase, defined. right? Yeah. Right. Um, so that's again, that's your your choice. What you want to do with that? Um, I, I don't know what's minor anymore. <laughs> every, every time you look at something, minor is different. <laughs> Capital, is different, you know, right. improvements used to be a thousand dollars. Now they're ten thousand dollars. You mm -hmm. know, for the threshold. Right. Um, you know. But, Auditing is, you know, thirty thousand would be a minor error in an audit for a three million dollar budget. So, when you're asking the voters who would expect to have some say in outside agencies, minor gets a lot smaller. I think that's, yeah. you know, the state statute is pretty clear that when the voters yeah. give up re local resources to outside agencies, you have to ask the voters. So you do that in their budget with your twenty four or five special outside agencies, but the new requests, the first time request, or the non-minor requests are usually held up for an article. Um, so that's kind of what we've been doing. So the 5,000 definitely would be an article yeah. at town meeting day, um, mm -hmm. not a non-minor. Yeah. But I don't know if $1,500 increase is or not. What do you think? Is it is it a is it a minor or a major? What five thousand? The no, we 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 know that that's an article. But see, the family center. Oh, the two hundred. No, the family center wants to go from fifteen to three thousand, and they didn't get enough signatures. They're right up near the top. Either it's right or it's wrong. Did yeah, they, I mean, I, just a suggestion, but five hundred or less seems minor to me in the scope of this is a special outside agency type thing, which you're really supposed to hold your local money local. Mm, that's what I'm saying. It's so it should be really low, and then if, and it will be, even if you decide to put the 1500, it's still a line item in the budget you can call out, but this is really about bringing it up front in the article because it's not minor at no, right, 500. Right, 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 because they're asking more. But that's, that's just how I look at the other, the overarching issue of it really needs to go to the voters because it's outside. Right. Agency. So with the family center, what you'd do is they'd be looking for an increase from 15 to 3. Yeah. So right. even if they lose, they'd still get the 15. Right. Right. Yeah. I think that's what we do yeah. with them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I, I can use it for Kim and, you know, every year we have to do this reach out to see uh, we can amend the policy to 500 if you want to. I think that makes sense. If it, yeah, if it's under, yeah. But we can do that another time. Right. But, okay. Okay. Uh, that is that all the changes we have on these guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. There you go. Got your answer. Get us the information. You ought to be good. And then see anybody. We try to take care of all of these things. Then, if people want to sit through the budget stuff, you're more than welcome to. But if you want to leave, we are not offended. <laughs> Some people think this is fun. Other people go, "Oh, have a root canal." Okay, took care of the outside. Now we'll go to the budget. I don't need that one. 
Okay. Huh? Huh? This one I want you to look at. I want you to look at that number. See if we can lower it, you mean? <laughs> what a select board member abuses a number. Our goal was to see if we could, with all the increases that you have and the cost of everything that go up, to figure if we could. Our target is three percent, and not to increase more than three percent. If we can, did, touch, if we can, did, we can help did it. Paul say hey, Paul, oh yeah, Paul's oh, already. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're in, right, Paul? Oh yeah, you're in. Okay. We'll even we'll celebrate with you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, he had said we didn't find anybody else. He was in. So our, our goal is to try to stay around 3%, which is, we all know with our own home budgets how hard that, that can be these days. There's, yeah, there's two. There's the budget increase and the tax rate increase. Yeah. We've, we've been averaging under 3% tax rate for 10 years. Yeah. So that's the, the budget is around 4, but then we have a little bit of growth in the grant list to knock it down to 3. So first draft, right. everything's open to discussion. Why don't we just go right down through line by line? To yeah, line by line. Oh or, my God. Or section by, by section. There you How's go. that? Okay. Yeah. You want to just start on the municipal expenses, and and two and one of the things so that we did because we talked last year and the, we agreed it was a good idea. Some of some of the budgets may look as though there's a tremendous increase. Um, when you're looking at individual budgets and that's because we've decided like when you're talking about the the town highway instead of everything that it costs us to to run that department should be there which means all the salaries and the expenses and all those sorts of things you previously what's just been under us here's the trucks and the gas the day, and here's what you need yeah. and personnel has all come under a separate thing so we've gone through, so this <laughs> this year there may seem to be some radical changes and people are going, my God, the budget is going up a gigantic amount. Well, actually, no, it isn't. What it, it's, a, it's a making this flip so that now all the cost of the folks that work in the highway department or everybody, the money that goes to the fire department or the rescue squad, it's now all under that department. So that's what it, you see what it actually costs us to have our highway department. And, and so it appears as though in the office that the office has taken a gigantic reduction. And no, we haven't taken a gigantic reduction. We've just moved the money around and it's in the different departments. Okay. Take it away, Ryan. All right. So I, if you want to start with expenses or do you want to start the cover page? This is from the handout that we're, we tossed out there earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. So, what do you want to do, guys? Careful of those. Whoop. What do we have to do? Sorry, disconnect. What? Can, can we talk on the, on the previous employees' salaries and stuff? No. So we I, I don't think we. So, we really can't do not much on this yet? Well, sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is this is what they're going to be. And this is what it is in the future. You're good to go. Thank you for coming out. I know I was saying it without. But we, we, I want to know why it's going to come to Hawaii. We got a seven dollar yeah, less employee. So seven dollars less. Why should yeah, I go up? Don is making 27, and you pair's going to make uh, 20 for 40 hours. Oh, oh, that three, that three percent, it's only five thousand dollars increase oh, good for to raises. Do, oh, I love it. Better to know. I don't know if I can say it. No, I just wanted. No, but I can answer that for you. Oh. Yeah, good point about the future. We, we budgeted the new person in right, but we ever mm -hmm. get to fix at 25 plus we know. two yeah, family not, not benefits. Mm -hmm. yeah, We're yeah, offering 20. A, mm -hmm. there was two this is what if we have to go up to the full price, I what it would cost us. Okay. Correct. But, but, but Matt's going to come on his list. Yeah. Uh, 
that pay, right? right. Yeah, no. The, the deal was. Right, right, right. The, the right. Corner, the right. right. And, and Kim knows that, and the, yeah. the, the, the people she has interested in. The, the deal yeah. was. Yeah, if the person comes sure. 40 hours, so they'll go to the whisper. Did you take that upstairs from me? Yes, it wasn't. They're going to be 32. But I'm not going to wait till. Just to save me from something. Yeah, we're, we're waiting no, until no, they make sure he gets in there right. and he wants exactly. to do that. Go find that, for us. that he wants to do the work. And then porch. Um, but still, it, 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 but still for it, it's all, it moves. It's the same amount, it just would get moved because it would go down to Lister. Eight on him, 32 right. on him. Got yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. So it's just where we move okay. it around. Okay. Okay. Front page, we're ready. Okay, so we'll just start at the front page. This is documents are edited continually. So if you see anything, it's going to be a misspelled <laughs> right. word or something out of line or something you can't read or a number you don't like. That's what we're trying to do tonight. Uh, this page, the pr cover page, is printed in the town report. And that basically gives everybody a snapshot of the budget, which at the very, very bottom is uh, the impact. You'll see the very last line on the page says $22 per $100,000 uh, valuation. That's the tax increase for the municipal side does not include the school tax. So if the budget's approved and the 5,000 for Lamoille County Mental Health is approved, and the 1500 is approved for the Loyal Family Center. All of that combined with a little bit of an increase in the grand list results in a 2.9% uh, tax rate increase on about a 4% increased budget or $22.36 per 100,000. So if you had a $200,000 house, 45 bucks. If you had a $100,000 property, it's $22.36, and you can do the math from there. So when it goes to voters, people will say whether that is good or not. So that's the summary, and then there's a whole bunch of line items under that for major changes that are detailed from the budget. On the revenue side, we do have a few increases up top for delinquent tax, interest, and penalty, which look like there are under budgeted for revenue in the past at least the history there so we're trying to creep those up to actual revenues and report those closer to actual so they're substantial increases but again it's it's based on the history not a lot of other changes throughout the revenue that's part of the problem you heard from the Loyal county mental health you have state mandates federal mandates no more money and we end up with the same problem. Our, our revenue, whether it's from VTrans for highways, has been flat for 10 years now, I think, 130000 or so every year. And 6% increase in paving it doesn't go well. So we end up going to the property tax, which is the only other alternative we, if we don't get state grants for highway work. Uh, so that's pretty much it for revenues. You'll see that the revenue budget of 3.99 is equal to the expense increase. We did go up to last year, Ooh. per hundred, for, for the budget. Was it? Last year's increase? Uh, yeah, I'm um, just curious. Uh, I can tell you in a second. Should be right there at the bottom. Well, that's the same one. Yeah, it was three. It was, uh, I think it was just a hair over three. Yeah, it was when we got through with it. Right. Yeah, it's yeah, at the right. bottom of the page. So if you look at your, your uh, yeah, it's 3.9 on the tax oh, yeah, rate. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, so right. Probably right. maybe $35 or something instead of 22 So last year it was 35 per hundred. Obviously, you want to get that down to zero, so yeah, quite there yet. Without revenue, it's really hard. The grand list is, is also a problem. We're projecting a 0.75%, right. not a one or a two. Ideally, you want to be around 2% annual growth to accommodate in inflation. And we, we did 1.02, I think, last year for grand list growth. Oh, nothing much has changed. We did seven houses again last year, which we've been doing six or seven for the last five or six years, and some of those aren't very big houses, so they don't add a whole bunch at once. 
we have our last year of McMahon going on this year. This is this is their last. Yeah. yeah. So then that helps get you up to that one. Yeah. So anyway, that, we're not any different than a lot of rural towns across the United States. Actually, a lot of people are moving into the Willistons and South Burlingtons, and a yeah. lot of the government programs are actually encouraging that. So when Burlington, South Burlington, and Colchester come up with a 3,000 units in 10 years plan, which they did do. And you see what's happening to Williston with 250 to 300,000 condos and townhouses, and they're selling like crazy. You end up with 30 or 40 in Morrisville, and hundreds in, in the yeah. big, big place down the road. So people that have options to actually have money to do something can't do the four or five hundred thousand dollar bill that would take here for a single family. They go to the 200 or 300 where the jobs are, or more jobs. Are. So we do have a we have a lot of unsolvable problems competing on your tax bill. Uh, so that, I think that's where the boards always come back with 3% tax rate increase, we really can't get to zero. <laughs> you know, it, just, it would be cutting services at that point uh, or finding a whole bunch more revenue somehow. So, I mean, that standard inflation, I mean, we're running right around 3%. I across was, the board nationwide. Yeah, it was 2.3 nationwide last year. It was 2.1 for the New England area. So it's a little bit lower, but the, mm. but building and road building is up around five or six. So that doesn't help at all with you know trying to make a budget that works and get road work done. Well, yeah, you just you do less road. So that's a sad story on revenue. Uh, it's been almost the same for a long time. The only positive that we saw in the recent history was on pilot. So there was an actual error yep. in the pilot formula yep, that they true. corrected. So we went from yep. thir about 30000 to 60000 a year. And that was like the most recent excellent news we ever had. It was just simply due to a formula problem. It wasn't even due to new state building. You know, a little bit of the, the courthouse, though, I think was part of that. So on the expense side, we can go to general government, which is administrative services, uh, town auditing, town listers, buildings and grounds, insurances. And at the very bottom, you'll see a, a gross um, a deduct, I guess you call it, or re uh, negative increase, which is 101000 And that's due to pulling those payroll and other benefits out of admin that were taking highway, fire, and library prior to this graph. So if you don't do the payroll expense change, you'll have a 1.99% increase in general government. So that's just to give you the, 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 the real increase that you want to talk about for Tommy is the 1.99, because that's what the real increase was. The 16.52% the decrease is an accounting adjustment. The 1.99 is what the general government budget Ended out at. And there's not a lot of significant changes other than the payroll. Most of the changes are a thousand or less. You, you see the barrel, almost the last line there with VLCD, VCT, VLCT property casualty is reduced by 3,000. We're actually getting a good uh, double benefit right now through the league's general insurance. We have a good loss ratio for property and employees. And the league's group insurance, which they do a whole bunch of, I think 250 towns now, is also experiencing group good history. So they're able to give back some of our premium as well as give Hyde yeah. Park a good rating. So with safety, you know, protocols followed and good, you know, good history, you actually do see some of those insurance rates, which is a little bit different than health insurance, reduce. Of course, that can go the other way. A few big losses will, you know, make it start going the other way. And they keep a record of five years on that history. So it's not easy to get rid of a bad event. If you have a $100,000 loss, it actually works into your formula for five years. So better to keep, keep it as low as you can. We have one of the things that we try to watch is the reserve amount that the insurance company keeps for potential claims. So as we re report each claim, whether it's person, property, or vehicles, the insurance company signs a reserve amount that they hold should that claim have to be paid? Or we're down around 20,000, which is really low considering it's all town activity. It, everything from somebody walking out that ramp, you know, walkway and slipping and falling to somebody backing into somebody in a parking lot. 
all those things are kept added. The lower you get, I think 20,000 is probably a pretty low number for most towns. So then we see that when we see the insurance bill. But it take, it's, a long, it's a long time, that's right. If we go down 3,000 this year, it'll probably be about that for a while. I know, you know the, the history doesn't keep it going down that low, but it will have um, maybe you know, hover, I guess, around 40,000 or 45,000 for a while. That was about the only bigger of the changes in that whole budget. On the highway side, again, this is showing a huge increase of 13.27% because it's accepting health and benefits numbers. Uh, without that, it's 2.37. So, I, what, what do you mean accepting the health? Are there more people getting on the insurance? It was all in the administration before. So highway benefits, fire, yep. all that was, now we take, we had a big deduction admin, but we had to put that money to those departments. Yep. So okay. I don't, Dave, I, it's kind of a good time to check that because we've talked about it twice already, but right. for presentation purposes, we have to, we have to say that. So Susan right. and I were so talking right. about explaining that change in the select board report, mm -hmm. maybe the town administrator report. And as far as the budget goes, there's a note at the very bottom that says without the payroll change, what the increase is. I don't know if that's sufficient yep. what people we think about that. that to show the difference. There's an adjustment which shows 16, 32 percent changes. Yeah. But would, then a little note below says, oh, by the way, it's really. Yeah. I was, I was thinking what we need to do in our select board report and then to talk about it at town meeting is to explain that we've made this change and to call that. Right. The, the two different numbers. Right. Six, two, right. Right. Because even though you put it there, so, so 13 percent is like, ah, it's like, no, 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 you know, and, and again, we've, it, it's the debate and there isn't, I, I think it really just comes down to the individual preferences as is how best to show the cost of something and this board feels the best way to show the cost of what the highway department right. is right. is that's the way to do it. yeah I think it, is to here's yeah, all here's all the cost one right. fine tune to that that could be possibly you take how much let's say the person is doing the payroll what percentage of their exactly. money exactly do you want to go into that right right really tweak it down to say right. that and that we sort of go Right. If you're if you're IBM, you might want to do that. But exactly. yeah, the town of Hyde Park. Because Department is, of Payroll. Uh, yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is you know. When we're talking about building seven houses a year to change our budget, we're really small. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, so other than that, on uh, highway, we have the a change in practice. Uh, prior budgets for the last three or four or five years had three line items of $30,000 each that rotated every third year. So we had culverts, $30,000 stockpile. Right. Then we had gravel, crush $30,000 worth, get you through three years, stockpile that. And then the third year was small road projects where we do a bunch of ledge work or intersection realignment or something that was needing a lot of resources that we normally would pull from multiple line items. But here it's just one project. And, uh, a mini project, if you if you will, with, typically without grants. So that's where that line where that line was. This year's budget uh, changed that to only two swapping, which is uh, precipitated by the culvert need going up and the cost going up. So that when we have a thousand culverts in need of attention can we get to more culverts? And we couldn't get to more culverts without more culverts. So the programming that Roger Berry and Mark French talked about was increasing the amount of culvert replacements because there's, there's enough failed plus there's enough that need to be upgraded. Yeah. And the new plan is two years at 38,000. And so they buy them basically all at once to get the best price they can, maybe leave a little bit for you know, on-call purchases in the budget and then stockpile them or stockpile them at the, um, wherever they buy them from that they're willing to hold them and then we just draw from their inventory but have one purchase for everything that reduce the cost and then they and then keep the gravel crushing to 38,000 uh, for two years and what that does it allows them to produce different types of material we just started this year with an experiment to create stone uh, more of a stone 
filler from the rocks that are up there, which we never did before. We just crushed the stone into the gravel and sand mix to get a really good gravel. So we have a state spec gravel already. But what we didn't have was stockpiles for the, the other materials like road bedding, you know, rocks, or um, uh, the new ditching where we always have to go to Menashe. <laughs> you know, if we can get away with a small six inch minus uh, swale, then we have our own material that will save us money as well instead of running to Menashe. We don't have really large rocks. We're talking about this kind of stuff. So we don't have the one foot minus, which we need for a lot, but those will still have to be bought off site. So anyway, that's the, that's the idea. It's a little bit of an experiment, so it will be the first year to get into this two-year cycle. And, and that third part that I mentioned for uh, road, small road projects, that instead of going to 30,000 in, in that rotation I was talking about, it'll be 15,000 a year. So every, they won't have to wait to the third year to do a road project. They'll have 15,000 for a special small road project every summer, which will have its own funding. If it comes from grants, then obviously we'll leverage the 15,000 with grant money. If there's no grants, then small road projects with our road crew <coughs> using force accounts could probably get a project done. It might need a larger culvert, it might need guardrail, those kind of things, which we don't really have in the budget for those special one project items. And that's a change, like I said. It's a two-year cycle on those two lines, so you see the plus 30 and the minus 38, or sorry, plus 38, minus 38 that just rotate every year. And then the increase of 6,000 for the small road projects from nine to 15,000. The rest well, of the just, items are yeah. pretty well flatlined. <laughs> so. the, um, and the way the crushing worked out this year, sometimes you do have good luck um, in starting this project uh, so that we were ahead and then we got hit with the flooding. And because we had been trying this new way instead of having to go out suddenly and spend a lot of money buying rock we had it all there so it was um that was just fortuitous some sometimes good things happen and and so that um i think that's going to end up being a good way to to proceed in the future it uh, makes the best use of what we have up there too and when we have equipment up there it makes the best use of it yeah, again, that was 2.37 overall, which is, and, and the other variable here is Mark French, who's the road foreman. He's still learning how these lines work, because when he was hired, he was given a budget. And he's only, he's been able to get used to certain parts of the budget and make the adjustments that he sees, but he hasn't gotten through the whole budget yet. So every year we try to tweak a little bit based on his input and how things are changing a little bit with the operation. So. Uh, totally subject to change in per future years, but that's the current step is going from three to two year cycle. Maybe next year there'll be other, another change along those lines. You know, I, I can understand why you would have, have a hard time. And, and, you know, I say this every year, so it's not going alone over but I won't say it again. Is how could you run the appropriations committee down there with a budget like this? You just get your wages. Tell me, how much of that wages is hauling gravel? How much wages is that is uh, uh, putting on chloride? How much wages is that is putting on the sand? The, 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 there's no, there's no roadmap to follow. I can see why he gets all cabobulated up. Yeah, the only way we budget wages is they get the, under the union contract, they have their 40 hour work week. And mm -hmm. pretty much the majority of the rest of the wages is winter overtime. I forgot to mention that because, I don't say because of climate change, but uh, the last couple of years we've had to look yeah. at the actual expenses for the last few winters, and mm -hmm. our overtime budget used to be 200 per employee. Right. Uh, we changed it last year to 250 per employee. And this is really just wintered overtime. We don't have a lot of the other things that you're talking about at the overtime rate. But uh, we're, at, we're almost at 300, going on 300 this year. So the budget includes an, another increase to 275. And I don't know what, it, I don't know how else to, we really would have to change how we use overtime from a practical to, mm -hmm. to deal with that. You know, some places will go, uh, by the way, we're, um, we're, we're reducing salt in these areas. Or I think I was in Jericho and they, it was right after it snowed and they had 
less salt, I can tell because I just drove up from Richmond, which is almost the same climate zone on Brown Straits Road. As soon as you hit the town line, you could see a change in how they maintain the road. There was snow on the ground, which there was none on Richmond's portion. And every corner and intersection had a ton of salt and sand. But the straightaways with flat, no, they had no salt and sand hardly at all those straightaways. I think Governor Peck, Browns Trace, and Barber Farm are all, if you read the signs, they're all uh, reduced salt areas, and they have been for quite a number of years. And you'll notice that I used to commute that road. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. But, you get what, but what I was getting that wrong is, let's say, uh, say the deal with Morristown now, and we don't do the trucks and stuff. Yeah. Yourself. If we don't know what the labor is to haul our gravel, how can managers look at this right here and and know what it was so they can say, well, it may be cheaper to, to, to hire contractors to do that rather than doing it ourselves. Because we oh. don't know this $233,000, $695,000, how much of it is hauling sand. Well, you're talking about two different things. You're talking about a project or a task versus a budget. So in the sense of a budget, you budget for 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. When you're talking about task and comparison, task does have, has no impact on the budget. If you're talking about how to do something better, you do what we did with the sand cost. Mm -hmm. you, you look at it that way. You're talking about three or four weeks out of the year. It's not gonna have an impact on the budget because you're, gonna, you're not gonna reduce their, unless you want to, you're not gonna reduce their 40 hour week times 52, that's always gonna be a constant. If you wanna talk about projects, then you pick them off one by one and try to figure out a better way. It has nothing to do with the budget. What you're talking about are apples and oranges. Okay. Now, now you're, 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 better. <laughs> but you're, you're talking about something totally different. This is, this is my suggestion. Some, and State of Vermont is just starting to do this up with two new ways to budget, which I don't know if it's actually implemented yet. One was performance-based budgeting, and the other one was the um, cost-effective budgeting. So performance-based is getting your work done, and how much does that work cost, and that's how much that program gets. But you, you have a program mm -hmm. debate about all the things that you're going to do, and then you have a transition in this type of simple budget, basically, to a programming budget which I think is what you're really saying. So if you want to go to programming budget, that's a totally different way of budgeting. You basically have highway paving program, highway culvert program, highway winter salt program with its own wages and costs and truck costs and all that other stuff. And we'd spread the insurance cost and we'd have a program cost. Mm -hmm. That's different than what we do. All we do is take the 40 hours times 52. That's it. Yeah. And then the manager, which is road foreman and the select board, determine how to get that done the best way. It's way different than what you're talking about, which is a more of a programming budget, which the state of Vermont like, is trying to do because they want to see you know, $500,000 get 30 miles of paving done. Yeah. And they cost that out right down to what you just said. Well, what I like to see is the hours for the hauling gravel, yeah. the, the, the uh, uh, cost of the, the, the truck, the cost of the fuel, the cost of everything, do it, then get a bottom line. This is what it cost us. Yeah. It costs us $120,000 to haul us. Yeah, so we'll, be able, we'll actually be working on that because we, we have to report that exact information for the flood. So you'll be able to look at the flood event and see how much it costs for a truck to go to the pit, to a site, you know, that, and how much the land, where it, we haven't included the additional costs, which federal grants typically allow, which is your payroll expense and you know those kind of things. Right. You know, like the, the housing of the administration right. building. You can get really detailed yeah. on what you charge uh, FEMA for. We do report rates that include all benefits now, but we don't include the the administration for like the, the garage fee for you know housing the truck. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's a whole that is a whole different discussion that we do not do here. I mean, we. It's a different concept of breaking those things out into programming. Well, coming from a, the government where we tracked everything, man hours and looking at time and stuff, they were always looking at how could they contract out our work. The federal right. government, right. we tracked and we spent millions of dollars a year tracking our labor so a contract company could figure out how much it would cost to take our jobs. <laughs> but what we did find is that we, were, we had to hire someone just to track a little minute time because now you've got an employee said, oh, what did I, 
I drove to the pit for this project, but I loaded there, and then I, I drove over to this side of the pit for this, and I got to break my man hours out. And then he was, all of a sudden, to break it down, to get fine tuning, we were spending more time covering the administration and tracking the time than we were just doing worth the job. Yeah. And when I worked for Carl Seuss, we had card slider machines, and you went in there and you did a project, you had to scan the work order, and then you had to do all this stuff. And we started to spend, I think the overhead was um, starting to turn into four or five percent just to track the just man hours the of the project. And on the employee, and the employee doesn't care, right? The employee just would rather do the job than break it down. But ostensibly, we're always looking at comparing how much does this cost per mile to do this? How much does it, and I understand that, but if, you're gonna, if we're going to do that, we should look at the administration, housing costs, the share of the payroll officer, the share of you know, right. all that, because it's, once you have one employee, then you at least need one payroll officer. And then after that, though, it turns into a proportional share. Right, and when you get into are, when, you're, when, you're, when you're tiny, right. I don't know that it's worth it. I mean, you, get, you, get, you can get so bogged down. Where maybe not, part, maybe, maybe part, not on a budget, this, this, yeah. this dollar budget. Right. right, you know, on a on a the size, it's but still worthwhile. Like, it's like, still worthwhile doing. No, right. Like the brush, the brush cutting thing. We went back right. and forth. Right, right. We decided right. to put six thousand in the budget every year because it was the best thing to get a rental and run it with our operator. Right. Versus hiring an op, you know. But that right. was a. But those things are always good to look at because yeah. it gets right. more work done and it's. Right. But, but that's it, not again, a new idea. Your administration that if you're going to do it, the breakdown obviously for FEMA for any contractor. But when you're looking at renting a piece of equipment, then you have to have someone that's got to pay that bill, and you have a contract officer that's reviewing that, rather than let's say if the town owned the, the tractor and they just ran it. So there is some more overhead every time you look at contracting or breaking it down. The overhead changes depending on what you're doing with the money. So it's always critical because you could, if you're going to buy stone. For a ditch rather than crush it yourself if you buy that stone then you've got to say well we need a bid from three places for stone so somebody's got to formulate that bid get the bids together send them out it just that's four hours of time and that starts to break out there so it's just but 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 that but four, it is, gives you a final result you but if that four hours out. saved uh, five thousand dollars in, in cost yep It'd be worth it, wouldn't it? Hey, oh, I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm right. just saying be prepared that there's some more overhead mm -hmm. cost every time you break down your it's, track. Right. Overhead right. goes up. It, it's not quite as simple as it sounds. It's worth it, but it's just yeah. not simple. Well, and, and again, that's what we find out. You know, with the, with the sand, with a variety of things, we've looked at it again with the with the cutting the side of the road and and just and and found out that when we rented it, that they just they didn't. They didn't care how many hours, so right. you know they weren't charging any extra for the hours. So it was like, okay, we it's we can do more cutting and pay the guys over by paying the guys overtime right. to go oh, ahead yeah. and work on the weekend, sort of a thing. But that's the kind mm -hmm. of yeah that you need to you need yeah. to know. Yeah. Again, overhead comes into that too. Yeah. So, but the FEMA just being repaid from FEMA, if, if you can put your overhead in there, you're you're gaining what it costs because. If, let's say the employees do 10 hours or 20 hours of overtime in there, their portion of the administrator's time just went up. Right. Because they did a pro the administrator has to process more of that. You know, there's more things to do with that. So, you know, if you do it by dollar cost, this employee costs this much this year, and then that administrator, they're all the proportions follow up. That gives you more money for the we're working, we're it's allowed, yeah. yeah. Well, a company, a company essentially just goes out and gives a price because they've already done all this. You know, sure, right. Power Dodge, so right. or Percy, right. or whoever, right. they've already done this. This is right. how they operate. Right. right. We're the only ones that don't. Yeah. First step was, of course, breaking what you did with breaking the highway budget. Yeah. So we're, we're getting there. Yeah. Slow but sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is health, welfare, culture, recreation. Uh, oh, that's good. Fire department, sorry. Fire department, we have 
same thing happening here. We added 6,100 for the payroll expenses, which looks like a 20.48% increase, but unadjusted is 11.36. Uh, I think Ed's, Ed's here. He submitted the budget, and I think from a prior discussion, Ed, we had pursued the physicals. So you had a $500 proposal for physicals for FY21, which I think you need the 2,000 back now if we're gonna do physicals next year. Not 500, because you had to reduce that. So that, that's why your percentage of 12 is less. And then there's, uh, there was another change in there. What am I thinking of? Oh, the equipment. I think you had 12,000 for equipment. And we're trying to offset the increase of the physicals, so I think we can focus on those two lines a little bit with you tonight because there was a swap going on in there. And the 12,000 includes uh, the dis ongoing discussion about stipends and the hourly rates for everybody. So I didn't change that yet because that's not, that's something the board has to finish. So let's talk about physicals and the equipment and then whatever board's feeling about the salaries. I tried to ask a question of the Town attorney on the stipends thing, but she's on, on break today, so she'll she'll hopefully get back to me tomorrow. So I may not have okay. that. I'm, you know, I'll definitely have it for the 29th, but I don't have the answer to the question. Uh, Fast Squad uh, again, they had asked. Uh, Brad had submitted a report asking for 55, and well, select board had the same request last year, but approved four. So I kept it at four, but used his fifteen hundred dollar stipend number, which left twenty five hundred for training and supplies and radio. So, no, he was here, but anyway, he's gone. He's coming back. Okay. So anyway, that was a change based on what you had said last year. So I think we need to talk to him about the fifteen hundred dollar additional. Uh, North High Park, you all. Resolve that with a meeting up in North Bay Park. There should be no more changes to that. And police services is 3% increase for patrol and a negative, so I'll say 3 or 4% for communications. So that's how that page rounds out. I will check that chart. If you looked at the chart below, the pie chart, I haven't confirmed whether those are good numbers, but I'll check that. Where are we percentage wise on the town on the 911 sites? That's Brad. That'd be Brad. That's Brad. He's on the he's on the east side of town, which is the last section. If you start on the west side, you know he's going on to the east side. I don't know how many how many more years, but I know he's on he's towards the end of it. We're getting there. So let's 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 work on the two for the medical and the equipment. I guess. Ed, what's your what was your need on the two thousand more for equipment? You had, you went from ten you proposed ten to twelve in your letter. Well, it's just the equipment cost of you know, buying new equipment is going up so we had to make extra money because every year we we are finding that ten thousand is enough. Almost like an inflationary, because you don't yeah, proposing anything new, you're just trying to get replacement parts and pieces. Most most of it's replacement there. Yeah. Well, what's administration in the fire department? Is it office supplies or is it paper? Office supplies. Uh, folder. Postage. <laughs> uh, folders for the office. Uh, I think I would call that line supplies, not administration. If, if the, you can uh, change it to supplies here. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. It was just, it's always been administration, right? Right. Uh, we we can change it to supplies. and just guy come in to, to, every year I have to do an upgrade on our, our fire reporting system to the feds. And we have a guy that comes in, uh, Eugene, comes in and does the, does the upgrade for us and stuff like that. Yeah, that's still, I would still call that office supplies of sorts. We yeah. can bury yeah. the smaller things in that 
or slash supplies or something. We use it the same way. We have a little thing that's not quite paper or pen, but goes under supplies. In your, yeah. Well, and probably with that too to to talk about because we talked about the tires and the ver and the two the funds that we have, mm -hmm. um, and and how to. Um, how do we want to set those funds up that it's just sort of suddenly well if you if if you skip forward a couple of pages to the capital outlay um, <clears throat> there's there's the big there's the big just like we, we need with the trucks with the fire equipment you know here's the Mm -hmm. Here's the money you put forward because coming up someplace out there, the next thing you want, you need new is a pumper, right, Ed? That's in, uh, is that in 25? I, I think I'm right. Um, and that's like $500,000. Um, but... But that also with something as like the with the tires that that needs to be I don't know whether that needs to go in the same fund it needs to be a separate fund it's obviously a major expense that you don't want coming out of your you know out of your equipment maintenance and you know and out of the the, the ten thousand um, dollar tires and wipe you out. <laughs> So that it seems that that there should be a, <clears throat> and I, and again I'm I'm not sure whether we do it as a uh, we do it as a tire account. Um, I don't know that we necessarily want to put it in with the yeah, with so the big equipment purchases. No, it's I, not, think, I think the issue is yeah yeah I think, well yeah that's the other thing you have the fire what sometimes we call the reserve fund or capital reserve fund, but. The fire equipment reserve can be non-capital. So the question of Ed is, when I get a five thousand dollar bill every ten years on my two or three, three or four trucks there, should I have a flat line in the budget where I try to buy the tires incrementally? So I always have a stock of tires that's being done, which is a little complicated at two or three thousand dollars a year, or do you put it in the reserve to carry it year to year until you get your five or six grand, and it's in the reserve, which you you were can buy access any time, you know, constrained by the fiscal year. Right. So as the money goes in and it builds up enough of a reserve on a certain schedule, then you can draw down that money to make Whenever you need the tires. Right. So it's not a budget it, it's not a budget impact. It's not something that you, you have to worry about a uh, surprise or whatever. It's already right. planned out in the reserve uh, un, unconstrained by the fiscal year. But the increase has to be you know has the to only, be going up. The only group I see the what you first suggested buying so many tires a year yeah. is once you buy them, they're considered in service. And they yeah. start to age. You have a time. Yeah. So yeah. If I buy, let's say, two tires this year, two tires next year, and two tires. That'd be too complicated, I think. Yeah. Especially and if you know, install them. The problem is, all right, we, <laughs> bought, we bought these tires in 2020. We're going to put them on a truck until 2020. Right. 25, all right, they're, they're considered, already considered five years old by DOP. Yeah, yeah. So if you had more trucks, you potentially could get rid of, or have a line item of $5,000 every year in your budget, but you have gaps, which right. is why you would protect, you know, ideas as a result. As long as that's a, an item that is identified for the tires, because you don't want to say that this is equipment maintenance, because then that turns that, into, right. where does that, that money could just spill off into yeah. somewhere else? The way, the way we have- That's what we're trying to figure out. What do you, you well, so you just have a tire or a The library's got yeah. this too. So the library just went through a capital asset uh, survey of their facility. And they have a new library capital reserve fund for you know, whatever they need for the building. But they, in the budget for that fund, they itemized every item that they anticipate in what year, and then they program it. Right. So they know when they're going to get there, and they know that that's the year that whatever the regulations or whatever have said to do it. And they're also going to reserve a certain uh, floor. So they always have a few thousand dollars for the unknowns. 
So you can program a reserve fund to accept all these big shops that are spread out over the long term, and then keep your boiler repair at 5,000 as the floor of that fund. So you always have that, even though you don't know when that's going to when that's going to hit. And on those tires. Are you asking for replacement on the tires because they're wore down or they're dated? Dated. But I mean, then again, sorry, no. Then again, if 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 somebody inspects a truck and they're still good, I mean, they said there was a deadline of ten years on the DOT. I don't know if that's yeah, that's. That's the way I understand it. There's a 10 year limit on, on the tires. Well, well I think. 10 years, that should be. I, 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 it, I'm I, 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 I've never heard yeah, that. I, I would have, I, I'll have to research a little bit of that myself, but I got a funny feeling if they're not weather cracked. If they're inspected. They're good inspected tires. Like, well, I guess the question is, are the, are the tires still good? And well, this is just a DOT thing that is right. saying, well, it's 10 years, you got to ditch them, as opposed to, no, they really do need new tires, right? Yeah. Well, they usually look at them when they inspect every rig. I know they do mine. They yeah. do right. But then you're going to get into the argument, it's 11 years old, we're going down the road at 50 miles an hour, going to a fire, we blow a tire, come across the road, we hit another vehicle, who's at fault? Is, is, is it going to come back onto the town because? Well, I think if you have a tire man, inspect them tires. No, I do. I think I, I, I think I date things. Oh, geez, my old car's got 30 year old tires on it. It's inspected. Yeah. You I know, mean, it's a. Uh, I got to research that. You're not dealing with your own personal car, you're not dealing with commercial vehicle. Yeah, the DOT yeah. Takes, yeah. takes precedence on the commercial vehicle, mm -hmm. that's for sure. So if, if that example you just gave, I mean, and that tire is 11 years old, and DOT says you can, they come up and find out if you're running that, that old, older tire, uh, you, you could be looking at mm -hmm. uh, no, I just, really, really no how DOT works. No, I'm not arguing. I'm just saying that's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah, but that, that's with town trucks, because town trucks where there's out. We don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, I, mean, that, I mean, we're sort of unique. We don't run them that much. But, right. Uh, you know. And they are out of the sunlight, but then again, sometimes they're exposed to chemicals, which, you know, that's where I know we went through in the military where once they had a certain age, if they had one weather crop, yeah, but that's that 40 age, years old. It was done. No, we went to replace 73,000 tires in one year because even though they were at like six years, they were weather cracking early, and we well, had to replace yeah. them all. Look at but the they look at that, they see one weather crack in the sidewall. Right. And it was done because it was over. Now, if you saw a weather crack in the sidewall at 20 years, same thing. It was one weather crack. You know, over, it was like an eight, it was really small. And we had to replace them all. So. DOT, when they pull these trucks over, you know, they're looking at stuff. And they see trends, and that's what they come up with. It's, maybe it's not a rule. Right, I, know, but I, so I know a person that's into that. I'll yeah. talk to him and see what. And <laughs> have you. Inspect the tires. Have you already been replacing the tires this way? Yeah. Okay, and it just hasn't, for some reason or other, this conversation about it is the cost just hasn't come up before or we just have we just reached a point where the tires cost more or yeah. the well it's just like everything else everything yeah exactly I mean, right uh, the last truck we replaced was the 205 tanker and, uh, yeah, so that was five years ago or so that we replaced those Right, okay. So it's, it seems to me that it makes sense to begin, begin an additional tire capital fund. fund that's just the, the tire fund. Well, I think one of the missing pieces I have for fire and highway 
is well, the big good. picture of these tires. <laughs> it's just like, can we get a handle on tires if they if we agree that the 10 year and Mark will re Mark can retread rear but not front. That adds a whole different angle on what you have for a tire replacement plan. Because if you if the town says, here's our thresholds for fire, 10 years, just give us a plan. Why well, are you gonna do this thing? You keep your trucks for 20, 25, so you at least got one tire replacement in there. Maybe two. You go out, you know, past that 20. So, you know, I don't, I don't know how to do it other than say, can you put that down in writing? If it just says, you know, engine one, two, three, here's the years, I'm gonna need five grand, and then we put that in the budget, and then we make sure the annual appropriation is enough to get you there. Yeah, you're talking about E1, right? Right. Okay. How much longer are you going to have that truck? But again, I guess that it should be easy for you to tell us here's each truck and him, here's where the tire, here's when the tires are going to need to be replaced. So we just come up with a plan for that. Um, and then, and again, it's just like knowing in 25 you're going to be looking for a new pumper trying to every year put the money in the capital reserve so we're you know as as we we try to have the cash to buy to make these big things instead of having to borrow money um, but then if we know what's coming with the tires we can do the same thing with the tires just start a separate one and say okay and so then whenever the tires are you know, we've got the money there, and, and it's not right. every couple of years we need an extra $8,000 for tires. It's just we start putting some money aside slowly but surely. So whenever you need them, after a few years, the money will be there. And it's not a, it doesn't, it doesn't have, have to be a town item thing dealing with it. You just get the money put ahead so it's there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that, that's always, you know, when we get to the end of the year and you balance the books and here's a little leftover money, you, yeah. can, take, you can take, you know, you can take $15,000 and start off the tiger thing with it. You can't run those tire trucks on the rim, they'll start a fire in the summer. <laughs> one. Uh, I said, you can't run those trucks on the rims because in the summer it might start a grass fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, are they weather <laughs> cracked tough on the roads, too. Like as far as I can see, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to check, check the law and see if that is. So. Yeah. No, I if, you know, if it reads it, just going to be inspected or something. No. Yeah. I mean, well, okay. the, the reason we didn't ask, uh, you know, we didn't put this in the budget itself this year is we didn't want to fight it more than we could. I mean, so, yeah, that was the same thing with the air bottles and that, that, caught us off guard, we didn't realize that we could have to pop those air packs five years ago. And when we got checked when the uh, guy to take care of our packs was going through and he got looking at the date and he called Reynolds who we purchased them through and the guy said, those can't be five years old yet. And he pulled out his records and sure enough. So that caught us off guard else we would have maybe got half of them done this year and the other half done next year. Yeah, okay. Road we will. Uh, road they go around there. So I wanted to ask Squad give you some information in case Brad comes back from his travels tonight. Okay. So his request was fifty five hundred, and it breaks down. Oh, no, we Get it. Uh, it's four or five line items. He's got <coughs> administration or office supplies, I guess. Two hundred dollars. Training, five hundred. Supplies, fifteen hundred. Radio maintenance, eighteen hundred. Payroll fifteen hundred, which is in the budget, for a total of fifty five hundred. So, out of the first four things, 
which is uh, $4,000. The select board's approving $2,500, at least in the draft. So uh, if he was here, he could explain those line items to you so you can understand. It's exactly the same as proposed last year. Right. And I know he made the adjustment from payroll from 2,500 just simply because we're not ex we're not seeing expenses anywhere near 2,000. <coughs> maybe maybe 1,500 would be right on with the current level or a little bit better level of response in time. But I don't think I don't think he feels like we'll get to 2,000. There are new radios and new pagers, so I don't know what radio maintenance is at 1,800. He didn't explain that in his letter. So anyway, those are the questions we have for him. But right now it's level funded. Okay, I'm right. To Brett. He also is proposing the new- uh, Look at that, he heard you. Yeah, EMD for $750, which is new in a emergency management office expense, I guess a 500, that would be new, for a total of 1250 1250 I just read your submittal, Brad that you submitted for the budget. Oh. Which differs from the draft budget. Okay. So the draft okay. budget doesn't include the 1250 and it doesn't include uh, the, ex the additional 1500 that he requested. So back to the board to discuss with Brian. Who's the, who's the, really? that's you? I just, it was 1800 for radio repair? Uh, radio maintenance, it said. Radio maintenance. Well, we just got some new radios, Brad, right? We just barely, yeah, that's what, mess. Yeah, well. But in the situation that we're in now, well, we're in, but we have, have we? George has a brand new portable with myself, and then uh, the other three um, have fairly good um, portables and be all up new figures. So how many people you got? You got on the past five? Five. 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 So do you really think over the year you need 1800 for radio repair in there? Or what's that, somebody what's drops saying, one, they must be insurance on them, or somebody yeah, falls in the yeah. river with them. That, or, I don't know how that part does work. Um, I know they pay for pages. I just had my mobile fix. What was that? That was a 300 something dollar bill for my mobile radio. Um, that's 15 years old now, I think. Well, yeah, I can understand that. That's one Excuse me. That was when um, they first started to come up with the hundred grants after 9-11. We got the Right, but board. we know everybody's got new stuff, so we shouldn't have to spend a lot of money on it. I Famous last words. Well, that's the thing, you <laughs> that's know. Right. I wouldn't think. Here's the new I toy. What does it cost? In, in the past, there. And that 1800 is federal. Uh, that's level funded with with that 1800 in there. It's just a 1500 for. No, the the budget from last year is four thousand dollars total. The budget draft you see is four thousand. I don't know where the fifteen hundred comes from, <laughs> where because if Brad's asking for fifty five hundred, so where does where is that fifty? You know, yeah. what's he going to do without that fifteen hundred? Is the question. Can you justify the fifteen hundred to bring it back to fifty five? Because right now it's what it was last year, four thousand. Right. So that's See, what, that's why. But you I seem to have done all right so far this year, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, there is one expense. I assume that you guys. Ron has talked to you about that. 
um, AED batteries? Yeah. Okay. Um, but besides that, I don't foresee anything down the road um, that's going to cost us anything. You know, so. So every one of your guys have a portable radio. You can dot back and forth. That is correct. And it, 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 then they one each, right? Yes. So uh, just a just a question. I'm not. Uh, when you ask for assistance lift, how come these other people can't respond? Because they have other jobs too. They're not. Okay, but they couldn't call you to tell you they can't respond, or is that automatic toenail a 15 payroll fire department? Mm -hmm. I'm just asking the question. One of my class squad members, right now he's in the air over Brazil, so he has no clue. So you only have four then? Correct. You know, so he's a, he's a pilot for American Airlines, so it's hit and miss. So he just flew out today. For so a you can trip. only depend on four people, really. And then if Doc and George are in town, or they might be visiting their grandkids, now they're both retired, they've been doing a lot of traveling. You know, uh, I'm just, I was I, just. It's basically I, the same as fire permits. Yeah. You know, does Brent and John, Eddie, myself, do we all communicate? Sometimes we communicate when we're leaving town to let them know that we ain't going to be available. But a lot of times, you know, if I'm just going to take off for the day, I'm not going to call them and say, hey, Eddie, I'm not right. available for calls today. You don't count them, you know, unless I'm going out for a week or something, you know, then I'll give them the No, I was just curious, that's all. Yeah, I, I wish I wish there was a better way we could know that, you know. There is, full time. Well, just the other reason I asked the question was that you have one of our guys that's on the department, that's on the class squad, and I just wonder why he didn't respond to your to your call the other night for sister left instead of going with the fire department, that's all. That's all I was wondering why. I just thought his first his first call should have been with you. And you know, I'm not here to take sides because I'm not. But being the on the employee employer side, which I've always had employees that was on the fire department, and and I'm gonna relate this back to the fast squad. If there's you know a structure fire you need to help by all means get up and go. But Somebody needs a lift assist. I'm not saying it's not important, but somebody needs a lift assist. You take a man out of your workforce. If you've got a, a four-man workforce, now you took 25% of your workforce out, and everybody else got to make up for it. So, so I can see where it's hard for these guys to hit every one of these calls. I don't know what the answer is. I, I think maybe the answer is sometimes is bring it back to the fire department. You know what? Have people in the fire department trained as as medical people? I don't think I don't think you're gonna get any. You don't think numbers. so? No. Well, you know, they got too much going on now. Well, they got too much training now. Yeah, yeah. You know, because with the fire service training and then then the EMS training, you know, it's you know it's a lot. You know, for what is it for fire one to keep our certification up? So each year, for just to keep our level one firefighter is 24 hours, and then with me so, being an EMT. So what is the answer, Brad? I don't know. I wish I could tell you. Okay. Now I don't mean don't take this personal. I'm just saying it. What would happen if the fire department only responded to 50 percent of the calls? What What would happen if if the high if uh, uh, the, the 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 state People salt and roads and stuff only reported to 50% of the call out. How can Hyde Park feel safe? I don't know if that's the word I want. Safe, feel secure having a fast squad knowing it only makes 50% of the calls. You still have an ambulance coming, that's the only thing. But we would without a fast squad too. Hi. We would without a fast squad also. Yeah. So you were probably two people in the ambulance? Only two people. It used to be three at one time, wasn't it? A driver and two. No. Really? Even when I worked for Hawaii, 
it was always just two people. It's always been because Dan Volkler and I were partners, mm -hmm. and some even want to know how to handle that was it. So, can I throw this out just for, so this all started from the list of sets, right? For the fire squad, because the fire squad needs yeah. to call the fire department. Is there any way, Brad and Eddie, that you guys could work together and if they need a lift assist, to have like three guys go to that lift assist? Or that wouldn't be possible either. Well, I mean, you don't know three or fire. You don't, you don't know who's going to show up. Uh, the problem is what three guys? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, you could have a, if a like day, a call sheet or something. Guys are working. You know, and, and I have guys right. Sorry, go ahead, sir. I have guys right now in the fire department that, unless it's something serious. They, they don't leave work. All right, so like if they get to the structure fire, they leave or right. like for that. Sorry, right. yeah, sorry. The other day. Okay. Uh, <coughs> but I can't, I can't tell you, we have to do a general tone because I don't know how many people are in town. I don't. Yeah, I don't right. Know, right. Uh, right. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I mean, like Brad said, I'll earlier, just... if I go away for vacation, like I, I went away for Christmas, I leave a note on my locker, plus I tell the all the officers that, you know, I'm gone from this date to this date. Uh, if you really need me, you can get me through the cell phone or through my email. Yeah, but during the day when guys are working, or at night, because I have several guys that work nights because they plow and stuff, uh, I don't know how many we were going to, we were going to get to show up. I, I tell you, the, 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 the boiler right down is the volunteers. It's a state mandate that there's people out there that want to volunteer, but they don't want to spend 40, 50 hours of their life every year going to, going to training like we went to you last week. We had training with yeah. you for the sheriff's department. You know, if you have to, and that was a minor. Yeah. Your training, you did a hell of a good job, Brad. I believe it or not, I learned a lot, but that wasn't, wouldn't qualify. <laughs> That wouldn't qualify me. I think to, just to, if you can teach him something, you're good, right? No. But that wouldn't that, on TV. <laughs> that wouldn't qualify me to run with a fast squad. That one course right. that you give. No, no. And and, yeah. and and so these people that that have families or, or, or their own time, it, it, it's just. Well, that's the problem with everything. Too volunteers. much mandates. You know, like, well, well. Like right now, um, you know, you have to be a minimum. Uh, an EMR, emergency medical responder, yeah. um, and all these classes cost so much money. You know, we just offered an EMT class down in Cambridge earlier this fall. There was 21 people that signed up. Six of them ended up sticking through because they were willing to donate their their time to the course. But when they found out the price, seven, eight, a thousand dollars, like right now. As you guys know, I'm taking my AEMT class in Stowe, and that was $850 up front and then $150 for the book. You know, to ask somebody that's working two, three jobs to come up with that money to get their certification and, and then volunteer, you know. And or time. It, it, right, you know, so like I told you guys before when I proposed the budget, um, the uh, Vermont State Firefighters Associations opened that up to rescue services. So now we're going to work with the legislators to see if we can start getting grants to help the EMS folks pay for some of the classes mm -hmm. like the fire academy does now for fire departments. You know, so, you know, say if you wanted to join, there would be a grant process. You could fill out the paperwork and possibly get that grant and you wouldn't have to pay for a force. Yeah, again, the whole secret, get people to volunteer so, to help you. I guess the bottom line is here, we back to the 4,500. I can make it on. Yeah, I, th I think we can start, we'll, we'll okay. do the level. And, and again, it's with anybody. We know if something happens during the year. You come back. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's not like, well, too bad. <laughs> Just going to have to leave them lying in the yeah. road. You know, so you know no, we'll, we'll, right, we'll figure it out. Seems yeah. to be okay. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, with the with the new radios and things, that's yeah. not going to be. We wouldn't have had that for life. Yeah. What, what was he last year? Four. four. So four. it's four. Yeah. yeah. 
you know, four. I look, yeah, four. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. The, that's like, I don't know who suggested the point, but that's, he agreed to it. But. <laughs> 39 red? No. He jumped like, on that like one. The auctioneer. <laughs> Brad, what, what, how much do those uh, batteries cost for those? The AEDs? Yeah. Um, I've been hunting around, and to, normally to go out and buy one is $276. Um, I have found an outfit that will sell me for $207. Lithium? Yeah. They're a five-year battery, and uh, knock on wood, I've had nothing but good luck with these batteries on these AEDs since we owned them, and some, well, they're all 10, 15 years old now, and when they say five years, we're getting at least five years out of them. Yeah. Now, six, did, you know, just so. throwing this out, yep. did you ever check to have them rebuilt? Batteries? Yeah. The one time use. I no, uh, uh, interstate batteries re rebuilds uh, lithium, all rechargeable batteries. Oh, I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's there's a choice between rechargeable and one time. So the the ones he's talking about are one time. Oh, you don't plug them in to recharge them? Nope. Nope. No, no, no. So it's different than what you're thinking. Yeah. 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 All it is is a little square battery like this that plugs into the bottom of the AED. It stays there. And, and it, it just stays there. Oh, I thought you plugged those things yeah. in when they weren't in use. No. The bigger ones in our ambulances, we plug them in, but these little ADs that I have out in my truck and that, they're just battery operated. So, they're, they're so the ones that uh, in the airport, they're like right down the other night. No. That's that little battery. In the businesses, those aren't plugged into the wall? No, no. no they're just mounted on the wall. They, they have a little alarm in there that's like a nine volt battery that sets the light off when yeah. you open the, open the door or bust the glass or whatever, but that's it. There's no, they're not plugged in at yeah. all. Yeah. I stand just, corrected. I'm learning two things. We just double stick them to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> there are, there are, there are, are we're going to have to spend more time with you, Brad. There are rechargeables. <laughs> not what he's talking about. Yeah. Rechargeables have a lot of operational problems because mm -hmm. they run, run down. You have to keep them plugged yeah. in. Yeah. Well, and these guys are carrying around in cars for five years with no yeah, concern, yeah, right. really. Yeah, compared to the recharge. So there's an option. How many of them you need? I got three units that are dead right now. Right. Something like it. That's a cardiac science. Um, the ones I have is the fillers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did. I did look on so the Amazon. that back to forty-five. Um, Four, four, they four, are a lot of shit on Amazon, but I don't know. That includes so you can buy batteries? Well, I yeah, have it's got five yeah, for it right for now. For quality. You can move the money on It's a new line item. You know, yeah. that's, that's the only. If you bought one you in Detroit, well, I mean, the, just, you know, I'm just saying that. Uh, if you need the batteries, the PT equipment's no good without the batteries. You know, they're about 147, 150. You've got money to buy them. You just need your. Oh, okay. Because you said you don't spend anything without telephone. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's right. So for his next year, well, that's what I want to make sure. Right. Next year, we're budgeting money. Okay, you know, I, I did. Gotcha. That's what right. I want to make sure. I got three yeah. dead ones. Yeah. There's no good to ask now. Yeah, they've been asked. Ask the kids. Have you got money this year to buy these three batteries? Have you got money in the budget to buy these three? We haven't gotten the phone yet. Would you say 200? 207. 207. Anticipated 400 was the new number. That was two. 360. Yeah. But that does, that was only two that we. Yeah. So. Had so you after two you had 368 or some number left right. for June 30. So yeah. you could get three, but then you you have So if you can work with that, then the board can. Yeah. Approve and there's the three right. now. Yeah, they're dead. If you got three and dead ones. Yeah. Okay. Do you think the draft budget has 500? I think I saw you put 500 in as a separate line item. And I think Alan, Alan and I were talking the other day. I think I think we can get along with that 500 until we start getting these. Because what the problem is, all 10 or 11 units that we have were all purchased at one time. So getting that one lump sum every five years, you know, so with this 
a knee replacement program that we started last year. We're going to start staggering them. So, so the match pretty well. Right. You know, so every year we'll keep that 500 in there for the, the yeah. maintenance. And that should, see that too. should take right. care of any but, batteries. But I was thinking of the, the Well, 500. we just have to do some more homework. Two, two parts. One would be the battery replacement you heard what he said. itself. I agree. I kind of but also, that. I know most okay. of these have uh, these posters, posters are, you know, once you, if you send them at the facility, you know, facility have like a something on the wall even sometimes to say it's in the box. Sure yeah, there's a the box or, or there. Or they'll be signed outside and say AED on premises. Oh, yeah. So yeah. usually, usually when you buy a unit like that, when you buy the wall mount and that, they'll give you, they'll send you a sticker and a poster. To anyway, post. so that, I just want to make sure that the AED program that the board wanted to start last year is two new ones. Some money for batteries and oh, a little sure. bit of miscellaneous advertising or something. Because yeah. you may not get everything that, that you want turned off. to locate that. Right. Right. That money would come out of that same yep. right. 500 if the batteries are only 200. Yep. Right. Two, but this is year. next year's. So we're okay and this year. Right now, the new units that I'm going to start replacing, right now, them batteries are a lot cheaper. They're only a little over 100 bucks for the, the new units. You know, the units that we have. They no longer okay. make them. You know, so if one breaks down, there's no okay. there's no replacement. Yep. Okay. You know, so it's definitely time to start phasing them out. Okay. So what's not in the budget is another request for <coughs> Brad to uh, I think it's a stipend. Uh, I don't have my little sheet down. Is it seven seven fifty for EMD and then I don't remember what I put in. And it was but you already have five hundred for planning, emergency planning. Yeah. So you're adding seven fifty for a stipend. Yeah. So that's yeah. another request from Brad for emergency management di director uh, compensation for the year. So that's that's not in here because that was a new item that I didn't I didn't want to talk to Brad and have the board talk to Brad about that. Or lumping of the fire stipends, which are special. Right. Yeah. right. And the reason why I'm asking for that is the state offers an EMD course. Um, they have two levels, and I've been taking my personal time off, and I've been going to their classes. Um, so the first part of the EMD program, they have level one. It's like 42 hours, and I've got like 36 hours already invested in that one program. And then the second part of it um, will total of 88 hours, you know. And then, thank God, hopefully, we don't have these um, storms like we did on Halloween night. Um, you know, yeah. I uh, invest quite a bit of money, personal time after afterwards there. Going out with FEMA and, and taking pictures and, and all that of all the sites there. So I'm um, just looking for a little something to offset the cost of my gas and that. You know, it doesn't have to be right. 750, you know. Okay, well, we got to have a stipend conversation anyway, so, okay. We'll put we'll put you in the stipend conversation. Okay. You know, I'm just, yep. just looking no, for something. I'm, yep. Sorry to, yep. you I'm, know, because, you know, I enjoy doing that job, you know, and I'd like to see You say when people are talking about stipends, you're talking to the wrong well, crew I just, here. Well, <laughs> I, just, I, I, I just see, uh, I have no problem paying for his time going to class. Yeah. I wouldn't even call it a stipend. I'd pay pay what his class is for and he's learning with a with, well, a with a set fee with a with a set fee whatever his class is we should be paying yeah. for it. yeah I, I, he's I, well, it. I, I think I think it's the same thing with the fire department with that. Yeah. right we so ought to come up with some kind that. of policy yeah, for I call it, it training so uh, I call yeah. it pay for your training okay. because well all these trainings are free the state offers them free. But yeah, but you're, you're taking time. your time. Right. right. I take my right. time off. You take your time off. You get yeah. paid for your time to go to it. Yeah. It's doing, you know, your work hours. I can, yeah, I have no problem with that. 
fire volunteers of the same, you know, it's the same thing. We get, we got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next up. Yep. Ambulance is way up. This is a multi-year increase that they phased in from 94,000 to the current yep. 118 or so. Uh, so I think this is the last big jump for ambulance. I, at least that's what Scott Griswold told us. They they weren't going to hit us all at once, but they make a couple yep. of jumps. Yep, they make a couple of jumps. And I don't. I don't know if that doesn't guarantee anything for next year. 13.09% say nothing. It's one of the biggest increases we have in the budget is ambulance services. Yep. Uh, animal control is a slight reduction just because they're not going out as much anymore, which is a good thing. And cemeteries increased by 2,500. That increase was due to the increased cemeteries that have been taken over by the town yep. that were previously managed by private associations. Uh, the one pending question in there, there's about $1,400 or 1350 for whatever their annual contribution is that the cemetery commissioners make to the Catholic cemetery. So that issue has come up as a question of whether the town should, town taxpayers should be giving money to the Catholic church. Catholic church. <laughs> and I don't have that resolved yet, but I know it came okay. up in a conversation with the town attorney. So I, I, yeah. we do need a meeting with our cemetery commissioners. The only history I got on that was from Judy Lanfear that simply said that at one point, many years ago, they added it at a request and never really thought of the difference between yeah, right. town money and state school yeah. money and religious money. So it stayed in there. But um, uh, a good portion of that increase could be accommodated by taking that money back from the <coughs> Catholic Church and maybe a discussion with the cemetery next year or something like that. We'll keep it the same for this year. but. We yeah, but we do need to have a conversation yeah, about it. Somebody's going to bring somebody's going to ask about it. We'll yeah, I did. I did start that with answer. you, but we haven't done it with the whole commission yet. Uh, and that's pretty much it. The live, the recreation went up by three hundred to reflect some of their expenses that they're having, and the Greenmount Byway LVRT. That's a new line item. We haven't had the benefits of the Green Mountain Byway until last summer when the state approved it and designated yep. it, connecting Stowe to Cambridge through Hyde Park. Both the trustees and the select board approved that extension. Uh, that new committee, which is trying to ramp up the marketing, is asking for $1,000 uh, from all the member towns. And I think Stowe already gets money. Morristown's doing a thousand. Johnson is having a meeting with their select board now, maybe tonight. Uh, and then the other thousand is the LVRT maintenance. So we do have new maintenance because we wanted the, the portable toilets there. Yeah. That's a hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars a month, and whatever miscellaneous maintenance might be down there, which is pretty minor right now, but uh, we do want to make some more improvements. One of the things that we're trying to do is have the kiosk kicked up a little right. bit and I'm trying to do that with donations and volunteers if we can, but um, no grant money for that yet. We did have it one time, but that, that went away, so maybe we can get another grant project going on a kiosk down there, which would be a little shelter with information. Uh, uh, we already have a poster, actually. It's in the lunchroom, but we don't have a place to hang it yet, uh, which is a big four by eight sheet of map and information in Hyde Park. Community events was increased by 500. That was actually from a request from the Guyan Valley Hall Committee that wants to do more community events up yep. there, and they were hoping for napkins and cups and miscellaneous stuff. Those good old supplies things, yep. For the, and advertising. We already did the outside agencies on the next report, our next page. And the last one is the capital outlay. We talked about fire equipment going from 10 to 12 already for the start dealing with the tire replacements. Um, we're behind on Highway Capital Reserve. On the cover page to the handout, you'll see the Highway Capital Reserve has a goal of 215000 a year. We're only at one forty, mm -hmm. but we've been making some steps towards two fifteen. dollars Stormwater Capital Reserve, that is intended to be grant match for capital projects. 
Uh, we don't have a, we don't really have a grant match line for capital projects, but we're, Allison and I were talking about having more and more projects run through the reserve funds, whether it's a highway project that's grant funded or whatever, and keep them separate out of the operating, so we can really see a good report outside of the operating budget. So to make that really productive, you would have the grant match money in the reserve. Is a report, Ron, that shows us how much money we got in these uh, line items? Uh, we can get the report. Yes. Okay. For the 29th, we'll have it probably. Yes, yeah, so okay. well, I'll get to you before then. Okay. Library Reserve is brand new. They voted that last year and yeah, we did that last uh, year, right? are starting to build that up. Uh, that number should go to 9,022 and then set and be done at 12,023, FY23. And then they've so far agreed that 12,000 a year is how much they would want to see. So they'll, they'll still send 12,000 of interest income and other money to the general fund. And then that money would slide to the res library reserve. Right. So you'll still see it on the revenue page, but it's in and out. Right now, we get 12,000 offset tax, or sorry, 9,000 offset taxes. So as they phase, as that 6,000 builds up, we're only going to show 6,000 offset taxes next year. Eventually, that's going to go to zero. Um, right. Well, and, and that's the same idea. So when they need to do their roofs, they don't have to come to the town voters and ask for the money that they're starting to build up a cash reserve so that they've yeah. got it when they've got, and they. They did, they had a good assessment done, and it's like any building. Here's your long list of your, <laughs> here are all your things over time that need to be fixed. And so, again, trying to, what, uh, obviously it's the same thing doing it with the, you know, with the tires. What we're trying to do is to get everybody set up so when there's some money and you put a little money aside that you're, when the expenses roll in, it's not like, oh my goodness, and here we, <clears throat> we hit the town with, we need an extra hundred thousand dollars this year to do stuff. That it's just like, nope, we've we're putting a little bit aside every year so that when things happen, we don't have to go to the voters and ask for we don't to ask for an increase. And yeah, this this little section right here called capital outlay is where you really feel the um, I guess you call it, you feel the burn, if you will, on the grand list not growing. Yeah. So if you look at a 3.99% overall expense budget increase, and you want to stay below four so that your tax rate stays below three increase, the place that you generally cut is this section right. here. How, you know, if we right. want to get the Put money aside, right? If we want to get to 215, we're never going to get to 215 very quickly at this 0.75% grand list. Because once you get to this last section, your operating budget is, is bare bones already. You can't afford to cut these out if you want to stay with a no loan policy or goal. And then you end up, instead of putting 20000 a year, when you should be getting to that 215 as quick as you can, you can only put in 10000 Yeah. So this is, you know, the whole budget kind of ties off with the capital investment you want to make. Because um, you've already reviewed all the other line items as they justify the expense. Here you're trying to do that savings thing, which is tends to be the last one to not meet its goals. <laughs> but they are making progress. Making progress is better than nothing. So that's, at least you might be keeping up with inflation or something. One more thing, Brad. Somebody asked about the I know, the, the signs. Yeah. How far are we with those? I turned that over to Chris Jones because I just don't have the time. That was what well, before summer. Ron, I told you. Yeah, I think we have. We need a report for a town meeting. Okay. Um, I'll but, draw, I'll get one set up, and I think we've come to the conclusion what we're going to start doing next summer. Which what is it? Fourth Thursday. The fourth Thursday. Um, Instead of trying to get people on the weekends and that, um, we're going to plan on the fourth Thursday is our off training lane, and we're going to start going out and putting signs up so we can. You've got some now to put up. I mean, I'll yes, we got 
I got Centerville Road and all the little town roads off of that, um, Ferry Street, North High Park Road. Um, I have a batch of signs sitting in the station. Two put up, you mean? Two put up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We do have the signs. Yeah. They've been purchased um, and everything. We just take, we got them up. So once we get them up, everything from the Centerville Road to the Johnson Town line will be all done. Mm -hmm. And then all the way to the Eden Town line. Um, except for the village. Um, trying to get more of the outskirts done before we do the village. Um, and that. But the village, there's quite a few. I think we'll have to do that in <coughs> a couple year segments because I don't think we'll have enough with the 3,000 to do the whole village in one one year, you know, so. So after we get the signs done on the North Bay Park, Centerville, in Ferry Street, we'll have just McKinney Street Hill, um, Center Road, in the Garfield area, and then the village of High Park. Mm -hmm. And all the little developments are out on up Centerville and all that? Yeah. Yeah, what I've been doing is when I pick one of the main arteries, I pick all the town roads. Okay, just so that yeah. we need a report for the town. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll get Ron, Ron a list before town meeting of what is already done and what our goals are for next year. If that works for you guys. Yep. Whatever you guys, yep, that'd be great. however you want. Nope. You know. Okay. The last thing is the warning, which I have adding a note to um, have a vote on the, the Loyal County Mental Health going as an article for seeking five yep. thousand dollars. Yeah, so you, you got it down as Article Seven right now. If you want to vote that, that, then we're okay. going to add a, a article on <coughs> moving Tommy. That, Hyde Park Elementary. Yeah. I don't need a vote on that. I do need a vote on the Lamont County Mental. <coughs> Make the motion to okay. move to add the Lamont County Mental Health on the want list. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Pretty sleepy. He's got an A and E in the truck for you. I've seen him working on it. He learned too much tonight. Yeah. You still put your tongue on the batteries, right? <laughs> I've met my quota. That's how we used to do it in the old days. Okay. Um, you want to talk about Article Six? Just if it's a new, <coughs> it's a new one. Oh yeah, right. Um, oh, okay. <clears throat> we we know now that there is a there's an option for select boards to appoint town clerks and and uh, municipal treasurers and. That's that's one of those things. I'm sure you can argue one way, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, if if the town were to accept it, um, it doesn't go into effect until 45 days after town meeting. So I think it's a it's a good opportunity. And, and Ron and I just talking about it. I'm I'm open to other things. But to put it as an article and just ask if the town would like to have us look at what the options are. 
because part of it, again, is a small town. Um, electing treasurers really doesn't make sense. Um, but then the town clerk appoint. There, there, there are a variety of options and things we ought to do. And it's just as we've looked at the upstairs office and <coughs> here are the jobs the town clerk has to do, here are the jobs the select board, the town is responsible for dividing those things up. It's a good, I, I just think it's a good time to ask the public if they want us to look at what the options are. And then we could come back to them the following year with here's what the options are, here's what you might want to, you know, you now, might is, want to think about. Is anybody going to be there to speak to the voters, the pros and cons? Well, I think all this is doing is asking us if they want us to look at the pros and cons of looking at it. It's not doing it. But they ain't to field any questions. Yeah. So I know <laughs> nothing about it. <laughs> Between Ron and I, we know a little, we yeah. know enough to well, be there's dangerous. A, there's right? a couple <laughs> things that if you say yes, add this as an article to research and report back before next January. Because there, if there's an outcome of recommendation to the select board by the end of the calendar year, if anybody wanted to submit a petition or do something different, we need a few weeks in January to move forward on right. those recommendations without, you know, if we say by town meeting, then there's no opportunity to act on the recommendations. Right. But, so anyway, the, the way the article is written at the select board would come with a report or recommendation or just this is what we found, whatever you want to do by January 2021. At this town meeting, there's already information out there. The, the Vermont Municipal Clerks have information, DLCT has information, and Kim, who I talked to very briefly about this concept, said that she would have opposing information to present if needed, uh, as, at least as far as the clerk goes. She'd rather have it, I think her intention was to have that elected. We never specifically drilled into the treasurer thing, mm -hmm. but I would agree with Susan, there's more reasons to have a appointed treasurer than elected treasurer, but right now we have an elected treasurer. Um, and then I could speak to it if there's any questions, because I've just, I've read everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. What we can't figure out is what we're trying to study. You yeah. know, what, what, what we don't know, we, we would study. Plus, we could take notes from the comments from the public. What about this? What do other towns do? Right. You know, what are the pros? You know, they can ask those specific questions that would be part of that uh, report. Yeah, that's what I was uh, questioning. If somebody started. Well, we can only go so far, and then we say that's good for the report if you want us yeah. to do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let, us, let us just yeah, check it out. Yeah, the liability of the town clerk changes hands drastically if it's appointed rather than elected. Yeah, I mean, so it's <laughs> the clerk being elected and treasurer being elected have this personal liability, which generally we don't have an issue with, but it's, that it's there. Right? Otherwise, we you know, the town umbrella covers clearly covers all appointed right. people. Right, but there's it's who they're accountable to with the secretary yeah. of state yeah. and all that uh, the well, chain of responsibility right. if there's a complaint well and I, th <laughs> I think I think part of the issue yeah, every three years. too is so I think this is probably a response to yeah. um, certainly in smaller communities and I'm not okay all right Kim if you're watching this I'm not saying anything about you but you know it it's hard and you know trying to find people to run for the select board even for lister positions um, Somebody might not be happy with people on this, but people don't tend to like to run for public office. I think it's getting more and more difficult to have people run for public office. And particularly if you've got somebody that's already doing the job, it feels terribly personal and they don't want to they don't want to insult somebody and they don't want to get into a fight about it and they aren't comfortable doing it. And I and I think slowly but surely as more and more of town government changes I think it's becoming, I think this is a recognition that it can be harder and harder to get people to run for those sorts of offices. And as, and as the, the job of town clerk has so radically changed and continues to change, it's real, it's, and, and again, I think most people think the town clerk works for the select board. And, and of course, we know they don't. You know they're elected, and they're and here's this whole list of things that they have to do, and here's the whole list of things that the town has to do, and if you have a good relationship and it works out okay, that's fine. But uh, as as there have been seen over the years, there are um, situations where it doesn't work out all right. You've got a town clerk and a select board 
that aren't getting along which isn't helping the town so it, it's just uh, you know the world is changing things are becoming much more complex do you and even in a small town uh, governments much more complex why we have made the office structural changes we've made the financing and everything has become much more complex really <coughs> people really need to be um, you're looking for people at town clerks now that it really is a profession you know it used to be the nice you could do it and it just that doesn't um, the skills for somebody have really changed so you could get somebody you you know Kim decides to retire and somebody who's really popular could run for office and everybody knows them and likes them and they don't know a bloody thing about being a town clerk so you end up and we could as a select board or any so you could say man this is do you realize what you're doing so I'll learn it when I get there I mean those those days really just don't exist anymore so I think it, it's part of uh, again uh, trying to trying to balance the changing roles of of even in small towns, it's small town government, and how do you you know how do you do it? In the past, that's been filtered out even in the sheriff's department because you didn't have to be a, a police officer to be elected sheriff. Right. Right. <laughs> right. And historically, that's gone bad for some places. Yep. Yep. Just like the adjutant general, that's never been in the military. That's never been in the military. It ran a few years ago, yep. and that that could have caused it could have been good in some ways. But it could have been a lot of problems. It, it could have been a disaster. But they had right. an agenda when they got there. Right. You know, and and again, when you look in 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 small communities, it's sort of more into, you know is is the town clerk over time going to become a professional? And they say it really is. I mean, if if you look at the at the list of responsibilities for a town clerk, and and in Hyde Park, and and again, and sometimes you've seen. Um, our auditors and we have set up good systems so the only way money is going to going to be misspent disappear uh, you know and this is if the entire office is going to have to be in on it because we've got the checks and balances even though we're tiny um, but again some and the treasurer's jobs are sort of you know it's kind of small but that's the kind of thing you really don't want somebody running for treasurer just to, you know easier for the town clerk to appoint or the select board to appoint um, it, it's an interesting time so I think just just ask I think to me just, just sort of presenting that to the voters and saying we just like to look at the options and in January we'll come back and say here are the pros and cons. Here are the choices. Here's what we can do. What do, what do you what do you want to do? And we'll put it on the ballot for the following year. You could become a town clerk. Hot chance of that. It is. It's a. You learn, Dave. You learn two things. Yeah, you learn. You learn something. I'll blow a circuit or something. <laughs> Okay. Okay. There's that. Now, what? I guess. I, can, can I say something? This. Uh, well, of course you can. <laughs> I'm looking at the town clerk duties here. Yeah. And going down through, and it says fishing licenses. We don't sell hunting licenses, but we sell fishing licenses. It's a generic term. You can get all sorts of turkey licenses. We sell hunting licenses here, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Turkey you, license? You, you stopped it a couple of years ago. Yeah. Huh? Good all. Whatever box you check, we'll take your money. <laughs> Seriously. Because <laughs> we, we always give the kids their, their hunting and fishing licenses for, uh, <coughs> for Christmas. And we came in, and they, they said that uh, they're not doing hunting fishing licenses no more. I guess it's a question for your time to work. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, I thought they did them here. Yeah. Well, they, they used to, yeah. Okay. Stop on by. Check okay. it out. Hmm. Okay. Mine's called here. Internet. Internet does it too. Just do that on the internet. Mine's called free. <laughs> uh, the lifetimer. Ah, okay. Um, so anyway, that's the that's the summary and that's the budget. I think we have a we do have a pending issue on the stipends, which right. is a is a little bit bigger issue that 
I do need to get that comment from the town attorney, but I don't have that tonight, so I might have to wait for the main deal, main agenda item on the 29th. To deal with that first, maybe. What do you want to do? Want to tackle stipends tonight, or uh, do we? No, well, no need until we get, get yeah. stuff. Right. Get the final thing. Get the final thing, yeah. and we'll do it okay. at that special meeting. Okay. I hope I don't forget. I was going to say, just like, yeah, make sure it's in here. When's the 29th? When's the 29th? Right after the 28th. Okay, I got it there, 6 p.m. Yeah, that's the it's deadline. a Wednesday. Wednesday night? Yeah, it's a that's Wednesday. That's the deadline after the petitions are due and before the printer wants the final. What time? 6. 6 o'clock. Okay. Number seven. Just, just the minutes of the town orders and that stuff. <coughs> we got uh, minute, Roger wants to defer the minutes. He defer wants the minutes. So they don't have a copy of them. So we can defer those. Okay. And the Make the motion to defer the minutes. No, you don't need to. Yeah, no, do that. No. Nope. Consent. Okay, we got that. Town orders. Okay. Allie's got a new system for you. I was going to say, I know. He's right. Uh, no. And I don't want to sign all that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this all. Oh, look, Sarah just passed some. Thanks, Allie. Okay, there's one for you. Okay. See, she's just checking on us to make sure that it's okay. Yeah. That we did it right. In your petitions in? Yes. Right you're right there? Okay. I'm sorry. You need any more signatures? Here? Yeah. <laughs> I got the last so I could have a few more. So yeah, I that's right. You always want to have them. Right. 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 Okay. Great. We'll see how many people run this. There's only two. Well, only it's a elected here. office, so the deadline's about one. No, it's <coughs> 23rd, she said. He's running. Who else? Yeah. yeah. Is anybody else running? Gary, isn't he? Yeah, but yeah, but he's yeah. But he's, he's just staying put. He's right. current. Yeah. He's like a third. Yeah. Yeah, we're short. We're short one with Dan. We need two others. <laughs> Grab another position, bro. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Have a good evening. Thanks a lot. Later, Brian. So the new system is those big packets right there are the select board's monthly packets with their five signatures or four signatures today. Right. And then this packet is, when I get those back from you, uh -oh. I hand this to you, Okay. which are the That's it, everything ones. else, right. Yeah. No signature. You know why we got them all mixed up last month, didn't I we? She was like, what? <laughs> so that's I knew what she did in response. She goes, Don't give this to them. <laughs> I knew that because I see it going back and forth. That's what I said. It's very confusing. When they bust that thing apart, yeah. it just gets sucked into the ones. I knew it. I knew it. Didn't take a brain surgery to figure that one out. <laughs> she was watching us like a hawk tonight. She says, Forget it. We're not doing that to, doing that to me again. That. So is, is Matt willing to do the paperwork too? I think he'd be a natural for it. Uh, for Julie's? Yeah, I think he'll. I think he'll be interested in a little bit of everything, but he can't do totally full replacement of Julie because he's going to be leaving for a year. Yeah, well, exactly. That's so we, have to, we have to have right. a plan to work with. Right consultant or something or transition to an assessor you know back to the 40 hour per person doing most of the work. but he does want to go out and do a site visit once in a while yeah he still wants to do list or work right okay he won't be the face of the office okay like Julie would. okay we'll figure it out yes we can definitely figure it out <clears throat>
so in the in the snowstorms that we have had, mm -hmm. in the in all the choices were bad that we had, but we chose the paving choice. Mm -hmm. That was definitely the way the weather's worked out. Yeah. So good thing we did that. Up on the uh, uh, Thompson yes. Hill, you mean? Holy smokes! Look at this weather and this up and down. If we hadn't, man, if we hadn't, well, if we hadn't paved that, you'd be. Oh, You'd be in trouble up there. Oops. Wait a minute. All select board members sign. Come here. Come here, come here, come here. Okay. <coughs> Ask Allie tomorrow if she can make it a little bit more simpler for us. <laughs> And her, right? if she has anything simple on her side, I'll pass it back. Yeah. But that, that pack right there, you can look at. Just don't have a pen in your hand. Yeah, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Just don't touch them. <coughs> Those are the ones we see yeah. on yeah. the computer every yeah. week, right. anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, Those, that's right. Susan yeah. signs that. Right. I looked at them. I did too. Yeah. I love being able to look oh, at them. Oh, me too. I, I like it at night. Yeah. Yeah, soothe your right to sleep, or else really yeah. make it. Does. Donny, I can re can go through. Them. How do you like looking at him, Roger? <laughs> it's all right to my power. I'm gonna get a generator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. I guess I need a motion there. Make a motion. Make a motion accept. Down order. I'll second it. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Okay, we have to set the special meeting to approve. I thought we'd already done that. Tony, right. Yeah, we did that meeting. So. Yeah, we are just, that's the 129, right? Six o'clock. Six o'clock, okay, that's, we did that. That's on a Wednesday. Yes, sir. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. January's disappearing, isn't it? Go ahead. No, At least it looks like winter out there. Okay. No executive session. No, nope, I don't think we need an executive session. Motion to adjourn. Get the budget. We got second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? 